based on a mobile phone game with the same name. In a time that's not very far in the future where the technologies are evolving very fast, the scientists are doing their best to create the best possible results, and the greatest evolution in transportation technology to aid the greater good, and to gain fame to be well known around the whole world. Each company and each organization competes in its evolution against the other. A certain company by the name Anderson Okamai a great giant mysterious black high-rise tower with over 90 floors filled with all kinds of technology and scientists that are working their best to be the greatest of the great, the company was about to witness a very weird day in its life that people will remember forever on. High-Rise Heroes The day began as any other day in the week, people began arriving to their works, some people were new to their jobs some were regulars, within few moments, the life began to show up inside the company's tower, electricity began to light up the black giant, air conditioners began cooling it, and the work on new transportation technologies began. The scene comes entering the doors of the tower showing a man and his daughter talking to some scientists, and as we go on, the scenes show us the workers and the offices in the tower everyone is hard working, we continue on walking up the offices, as we're moving on we meet the janitor which greets us moving on, the scene goes to the nearest elevator and we go to higher floors, we continue on our tour inside Anderson Okamai Great High Rise Tower we begin noticing the work and the inventions that are coming up from everyone trying to prove that their work is better than the others. As we move on towards the next floor suddenly the place feels weird, the ground begins shaking, and the electricity is going off. What's going on? And suddenly it all goes black out. After the shake a blue-haired blue-eyed man in a suit stands up in the ruined place, whoa. What is happening? Hello. Anybody there? Suddenly a brown-haired green-eyed woman in a china dress appears from the ruined office, hi. Was that an earthquake? The man replies, I don't know. I, can't remember. The woman replies, this place is falling down. And we're right in the top of the building. Both of them examine the area with me or looking at the surroundings, the whole place is messed up and the ceiling doesn't look stable enough either, everything is on the ground. The man thinks for a moment then comments, we need to clear a path through this rubble to the floor below us fast. As they both cleared off the rubble and the stones from the breaking ceiling they both managed to get to the floor below them. As they approach the new floor, the guy comments, this floor is in a worse state than the last one. Suddenly between the rubble a blonde red-eyed guy in a red shirt appears, bad first day, huh, in turn. The blue-eyed guy looks towards the red shirt guy and replies, what? Who are you? The red shirt guy is confused, don't you recognize me? My name is McRule. McRule, approaches the blue-eyed guy and comments, I showed you to your desk this morning, you told me to call you Seb. Seb, oh, sorry. I can't seem to remember much before the shake. McRule crosses his both arms and comments sarcastically, well, this makes your first day a bit more interesting, don't you think Seb? The woman in China dress approaches them both, interesting. We're in danger. We've got to reach the ground floor. McRule looks at the woman and eyes her from her head to the toes then asks, and who are you? The woman in China dress answers, I'm Tammy, the most efficient secretary on the legal floor. Are you helping us escape or not? McRule looks at the rubble around him and answers, all right then. But only because it's lunchtime and I'm hungry. Let's get a move on. The three begin clearing more rubble, clearing a way to the lower floor. The entire place is totally messed up, and still they manage to get to the next floor. As they approached the next floor Seb began coughing. McRule looked towards him, what's up Seb? Not used on physical exercise. Seb coughed one more time then asked, is it just me, or is it getting hard to breathe in here? Tammy comments, I think it's all the dust from the quake. McRule comments, never mind that, I've just had a thought. If the cafe is still open, can we grab a bite to eat on our way down? Tammy raging shouts at him, the cafe isn't going to be open. McRule replies, I said if. Seb, perhaps we should save our oxygen, and worry about the cafe later? As they move on their way, the rubble began to become even thicker, and the air spaces between the rubble are becoming fewer, the team is having much problems with breathing as they fight their way through all the rubble to the next floor, and from the look of it, it wasn't promising at all. Seb comments, we should wait here until the dust settles. Seb scratches his head a bit, looks around him and the place filled with rubble, and then asks his both friends, what is this building anyway? McRule looks towards him and replies sarcastically, 
Tut, tut, somebody didn't research for their first day. Tammy looked madly at McRule and comments, he's lost his memory, remember. Tammy looks towards Seb and explains, it's the head office of the Anderson Okamai Industries, we provide elite transportation systems throughout the world. Hypersonic jets, super speed trains, luxury subways, that's us. Seb confused says, but I'm a scientist, why should I intern at transport company? Tammy replies, these top floors are occupational safety and health. I bet you were helping to make the system safer. Seb comments, occupational safety and health. My first day and the building has almost fallen down. I should probably be sacked. McRule looked at Seb and commented, couldn't agree more. Now let's make tracks, my stomach's rumbling. As they continue on removing more rubble of stones and desks, and other broken things, they manage to reach the next floor. As they enter the new floor, they take few steps, and suddenly they notice a big number of golden bars on the floor. Seb, whoa, why are there gold bars scattered on the floor? McRule looks towards what Seb is mentioning, gold. That must be worth a fortune. Tammy looks at the situation and comments, there's no way that they would be kept in this part of the building. How on earth did they get here? McRule looks at the golden bars with great interest then suggests, maybe, maybe we should take some for ourselves. I'm sure the company wouldn't miss one or two gold bars. Enraged with this suggestion Tammy instantly replies, no. That would be stealing. Agreeing with her Seb comments, yeah, that probably wouldn't be the best way to start my new job. McRule facing the negativity from them both he comments, absolutely not. I'm horrified that you would even consider it. Tammy confused, but, you just. McRule interrupts her, come on, let's keep going. Regretting not taking some of the gold to himself and being forced to side with his both team members, McRule helps both Seb and Tammy clearing even more piles of rubble and gold away from their path towards the staircase leading to the lower floor. As they enter the next floor, and begin clearing a bit of rubble suddenly Seb hears some noise coming out of the pile of rubble he's clearing. Seb to his both partners whom are clearing other paths, wait. There are noises down there. As he's clearing more rubble he discovers that the rubble he's clearing is mere covering the entrance to the whole floor. Seb comments as his view is cleared of rubble, someone's moving around. McRule approaches the space Seb opened and takes a look, that's not someone, it's something. The three jump from the rubble space into the new floor, and are instantly introduced to a humanoid robot. The robot looks at McRule and his last comment and says, correct, sir. Tammy looks at the robot, one of Anderson Okamai's bots. I beg to have one on our floor. They know everything. The robot, correct, miss. Tammy cheered up she asks, what happened to the building? The robot replies, clearance denied. Information only accessible by Dr. Urcher. Tammy wondering, oh, who's that? The robot replies, clearance denied. Information only accessible by Dr. Urcher. Tammy disappointed, maybe I don't want one of these on our floor after all. Seb wondering to himself maybe if we just ask it things that are normal and don't need any clearing it would work out, so he asks, can you tell us if the whole city is affected? The robot, affirmative. Seb asks, affirmative that you can tell us. Or affirmative that it's affected. The robot, affirmative. Negative. Seb confused and disappointed, you really aren't that helpful, you know? Can you move bricks? The robot replies, affirmative. Seb cheered up a bit, great. Let's keep working our way down. As they continue clearing brick stones and rubble, they at last seem to find the staircase for the next floor, so together they leave the floor without hesitation to the next floor. As they enter the next floor Seb asks, is everyone all right? The robot answers, thank you for your concern, sir. I am well. Seb notices that Tammy was kind of enraged so he asks, Tammy. What's wrong? Tammy answers, he's what wrong? McRule. He touched my butt? Seb shocked, what? McRule defends himself, I really didn't. No offense. Tammy enraged replies, I felt it. It wasn't Seb, he was far away ahead. I will sue you when I get out of here. Suddenly the robot comments, ah. That may have been me. Apologies, Miss Tammy, in the darkness I calibrated your skirt as a fallen fragment of curtain and attempted to move it. 
Tammy understanding the situation, oh. Right, sorry, McRule. McRule still angry he asks, still going to sue, huh? Do you need the details of a robot solicitor? Tammy recognizing her haste, I said I was sorry. What is this room, anyway? And what on earth is that in the corner? McRool takes a look and comments, some old chair, probably designed for the bosses in their swanky offices. Seb takes a look, and it looks like a weird silver solid electronic type of chairs with many wires busted outside of it, few buttons and what looks like a ruined command interface. Seb, it looks like it has seen better days. He approaches the chair and examines it, there's something printed on the side. H278 prototype. Tammy wondering, prototype of what? McRule examining the whole situation, I feel like there may be more pressing matter at hand, oh yes, that was it. McRule turns around himself and faces the empty spaces ahead of them and shouts, how the heck are we getting out of here? Seb notices that the staircase is blocked, he looks around until he notices something, there's a hole blasted in the floor over there, we can lower ourselves through it. As they began moving on they started clearing more bricks and rubble avoiding some more still falling rubble and going to areas without dust, they managed to reach the hole. Seb lowered himself first, the robot not wanting to repeat the same mistake it did earlier, it lowers itself first through the hole, and then helps Tammy to lower herself, lastly McRule jumps down following the team. As they reach the new floor they're in and begin examining it, Tammy comments, I recognize this layout, we're in the legal sector. McRule comments sarcastically, that's fantastic. Now all our worries are solved, huh? Can't you tell us something useful? Tammy calmly replies to him, is it useful to know that there's a chimpanzee dangling above your head? McRule takes a look above him, huh? Whoa. What the hell is that doing there? The monkey, ee 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 ah. The robot looks at it and comments, it appears to be holding onto the pipe above your head, sir. Tammy feeling pity for the monkey she comments, he's terrified. Come here, little fella. The monkey jumps down. Seb, be careful, he's not that little. As the monkey reaches Tammy, Seb notices something, wait, there's some kind of tag on its ankle. It looks like it's got a code printed on it. Seb looks at the robot, bot, can you scan it? The robot, affirmative. Data reads, Primate test subject number 89 preferred name, Sir Arthur. Tammy wondering, why is there a test subject at Anderson Okamai? Unless he escaped from a lab nearby. Suddenly the monkey jumps from Tammy's arms and reaches for Seb. Tammy comments, oh, he likes you, Seb. Seb answers, that's because I've got a banana in my pocket. Tammy wondering, I was going to ask about that. McRule interferes, Seb here loves bananas. He says they're brain food. Seb questioning, did I tell you that this morning? It actually sounds familiar. The monkey is still around Seb and is not moving anywhere. Tammy comments, for goodness sake just give Sir Arthur the banana and let's go. And the monkey instantly began eating it. Upon finishing its meal, the monkey actually began helping the team clearing off more rubble with everyone's help, they were able to remove enough bricks and more broken things until they managed to get to the staircase and went to the lower floor. As they reach the next floor, Tammy noticed the windows and commented, it looks bright out the windows, yet all I can see is fog. Seb noticing what Tammy said he asks, is there any way for us to contact the emergency services? Tammy answers, the landlines are all down, and my cell has lost signal. Even the connectors aren't working. Seb asks, what's a connector? Tammy raises her hand and shows him a wrist watch, this smart watch. It connects you to everyone in your sector. See, you've got one too. Seb takes a look at his wrist but he's disappointed, hmm. Mine's broken. McRule suddenly interferes as Sir Arthur is annoying him, never mind that. What are we going to do with this monkey? Seb answers, right now. He's the only clue we have as to why there's test subjects here. Let's bring him. And as they finish talking, they begin clearing away new rubble from their way, at this point they notice that sometimes when they connect a number of rubble together the rubble's weight will grow that it'll take away with it a pile of more rubble into the lower floors, which may help them clear their paths even faster. As they continue on clearing together path at last they manage to reach the staircase, so they continue on to the lower floor. As they reach the next floor, Tammy comments, ah, look at him rifling through the trash cans. 
he must be looking for food. McRule comments, I told you I was hungry. Tammy confused she looks towards McRule, um, I was talking about the chimpanzee. Out of the awkward situation here, the team was kind of stunned, suddenly the ceiling drops over the monkey. Tammy shouts, oh no. Some rubble has fallen, Sir Arthur is trapped. Everyone wakes up from their weird stun and instantly begin helping the poor monkey to escape, once they get him out, they suddenly notice that actually reached the staircase. They continue on their way to the next floor. As they enter the floor, Seb instantly begins removing the rubble however, he notices how heavy they became, some of these bricks are too heavy to move. Tammy comments, that's because they're steel plated tiles. Don't you remember how great they looked in the office restrooms? Seb looks towards her and comments, no. I can't seem to remember anything before the shake. Tammy instantly remembers that he has amnesia, sorry, Seb. I forgot. Tammy comments, it's just that if I wasn't a legal secretary I think I would have made a great interior designer. I mean there's so much I could do with this place. It really needs a new look. McRule comments, that's because it's disintegrating. Seb, come on. We'll just have to go around the metal rubble. As they continue on moving throughout the floor getting away from the piles of unmovable metal bricks they continue their path moving more piles of rubble, until they make it out to the staircase where they continue on their descending to the lower floor. As they reach the next floor, Tammy goes first this time inside it and takes a look, in moments she comments, this is my office, gasp it's ruined. All my work's on the floor. The monkey not finding any food in the trash cans previously begins biting the files. Tammy, Sir Arthur, stop eating my files. And she begins clearing up her work. Seb sees the situation, let me help clear up. McRule seeing them both cleaning up an already ruined office he comments, what the heck are you two doing? We should be making our way to the exit, not tiding. Seb looks at him and says, start without us, McRule. Seb looks towards Tammy and asks, is there anything you want to take with you, Tammy? We might not be able to get back into the building once we've escaped. Tammy searching through her desk she replies, no, it's okay, it's just. She looks at Seb, my mom gave me a lucky china cat for my first day. I kept it on my desk. It's probably smashed now. Seb wanting to help out, if it's important to you, we should try to find it. Come on, I'll help you look. After some searching through the desk Seb finds something. Seb, hey, is this it? Tammy takes a look, yes. I can't believe it's intact. Seb comments, it landed on the cushioned chair. Now that really is lucky. Tammy cheered up, I knew it worked. Thanks, Seb. Seb comments, don't mention it. You know, I could have done with a good luck charm today. Tammy with a smile, I'll buy you one when we get out of here, I promise. Tammy looks at her lucky cat, then comments, oh, maybe the cat will bring us some good luck on our way to the exit. Seb speaks sarcastically, well, if some rubble falls on McRule then I'll know it works. Tammy laughing, Seb. Seb smiles, I'm joking, kind of, it's nice to hear you laugh anyway. McRule has been clearing the rubble all this time, as he notices them he calls them both, hurry up. The chimp is more help than you two. As they both join the team and continue on removing the piles of brick stones and rubble, they at last reach the staircase to the next floor, and so they continue on. As they move forward, the robot suddenly speaks out, caution is advised. Seb looks towards the robot and asks, what is it, bot? The robot replies, I'm detecting unstable battery cells on this floor. McRule gets worried, battery cells? Up here? That's concerning. Tammy asks, what are the cells used for? McRule answers, they're used in most of our transportation systems but the earthquake must have destabilized them. We need to deactivate them as quick as possible. McRule adds, and then find the cafe. Tammy holds her hand on her face and gives a sigh. As they move on through the floor, they find a number of battery cells, deactivating them one after another, McRule informs the team that they must get rid of the batteries before they get any farther destabilized, since once they're too much destabilized they'd explode in a poison gas cloud. And so the team begins taking a lot more care about getting rid of the battery cells as fast as possible, after some rubble removing and battery deactivating, they at last reach the staircase of the floor and move out to the next one. 
as they enter the floor Seb notices something, hey, there's light coming from that office. Seb takes a closer look, someone is still working in there. Tammy comes closer and takes a look only to see a purple long-haired purple-eyed woman in an office suit, on oh, no. That's, Lydia. I'm her secretary. Lydia notices the presence of her secretary and asks, Tammy. Where have you been? I need you to locate all signed waivers for every employee at work today. Tammy replies, sorry, it's been a fairly chaotic morning. Seb enters the office, um, shouldn't you have left? There could be another quake at any moment. Lydia ignoring him totally working on her computer, an earthquake? You're right, honey. Lydia raises her head for a moment and comments, although, no one could sue us for that. Maybe you're onto something. Lydia looks towards Tammy, Tammy, can you fake an earthquake? Tammy losing her temper, we need to go. Haven't you noticed the hole in your wall? Lydia replied as she looks at the big hole, of course I have, it creates a shortcut to the printer. McRule at last arrives and notices Lydia using a computer, is your computer still working? Lydia answers, more or less. A few of the power systems are still up. Sir Arthur enters the room and jumps on Lydia's desk. Lydia, Tammy, could you please get that ape off my desk? Throw it out the window or flush it or something. Seb sees how much Lydia is taken by the work and asks, listen, we're trying to get out of here and we need all the help we can get to clear the stairs. Can't you take the rest of the afternoon off? Lydia answers, I suppose I could take some annual leave. And it is pretty hard to work with all this dust in my eyes. Lydia turns to Seb, so yes. Count me in, honey. I'll work on my tablet device on the way down. She turns towards her files, as everyone begins moving. Tammy calls the monkey, great, Sir Arthur, stay with me. Avoid the windows. The monkey moves with Tammy but then returns to Lydia which is a bit late only to hear her talking to herself. Lydia, right, I'll catch up with you. I just need to find those forms for you all to sign, the ones with plenty of small print. After looking for some more time, ah yes, there they are. As she stands up noticing none is with her other than the monkey she walks outside her office and takes a look. Lydia, now, which way did they go? Tammy. The monkey comments, E -e 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 -ah. Lydia walks around a bit, but looks like she lost them, how did I get stuck with this ape? The monkey, e -e -e -ah. Lydia crosses her arms, I suppose we can't have unattended primates running around an office. Although that's how I'd describe some of my employees. The monkey comments, oh 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 yeah. Lydia, no offense, honey. As she tries to find her way towards the lower floors, trying to catch up with the others, the rubbles are too much and they both aren't capable of removing everything fast enough. The monkey comments, oh 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 ah. Lydia is too busy removing the bricks blocks her way, look, don't you have someone else you can annoy? She stops for a moment to wipe her sweat, why is it always the hairy ones who take an interest in me? Sir Arthur face palms himself, uh. As they have removed so far so many bricks and rubble that they were able to descend two floors, Lydia looks at Sir Arthur as they enter the next floor, so, I know you're only an ape, but I feel like I should ask anyway, to be on the safe side. She brings out a form, could you sign this waiver form? It just states that when you entered this building you were fully aware that it might collapse at any time. Sir Arthur replies, e -e -e ah. Lydia, I'll take that as a yes. Just sign here. Sir Arthur slaps the form with its dirty hands from all the bricks, which leaves a mark on them. Lydia looks at that mark, hmm, normally we use a pen to sign these things, but I suppose that we'll have to do. As they continue moving after Lydia got her first signed form, she continues to the next floor, which looks like it's a little bit cleaner but some bricks are still in the way. Sir Arthur, eh -ah. Lydia looks towards it, what's wrong? Why have you stopped moving? Sir Arthur yawns, oh oh eh -ah. Lydia looks confused at it, am I supposed to understand that? And the monkey beings to lie down. Lydia, no, don't lie down. We've got to keep moving. No response. Lydia, fine. I'll carry you. As she carries the sleepy ape she comments, but this doesn't mean we're friends. Sir Arthur, oh oh yeah. After making her way carrying the ape on her back through the floor, she at last manages to reach the team. Lydia, there you all are. 
she rushes towards Tammy, Tammy, take this ape off me. Tammy takes it, come here, Sir Arthur. Lydia cleaning her back from the ape, why did you bring this animal, Sir Arthur, or whatever its name is into work today? It was totally inappropriate. Tammy looks at Lydia, he's not mine. We found him. It says on his tag that he's a test subject. Lydia crosses her arms and thinks, a test subject? That sounds like a PR nightmare, but let's not jump to conclusions. I'm sure there's a simple explanation. Personally, I prefer the term research volunteer. She looks towards the team, shall we get going? The robot, I'm detecting that the debris on this floor is denser than normal. As they continue moving on the remove more bricks, crash some more stones and other kinds of rubble, clearing their path towards the staircase. While helping the team clear the rubble, the robot thinking to itself, typical. Stuck here helping out humans and animals while the rest of the R103 series does whatever it likes, I bet they're all having another party. And then it keeps helping out. As they enter the next floor suddenly Lydia screams, ouch. My eye is really starting to sting. Seb, honey, could you look at it please? Seb approaches her and takes a look, I don't see anything, it looks fine. Lydia comments, thanks, I like your eyes too. Seb backs away a bit, uh, I didn't mean. Lydia interrupts, so, tell me about yourself. I haven't seen you around the legal sector before. Seb, me. Uh, I'm an intern here. It's my first day. Lydia interrupts again, first day? I can tell. You don't have that weary look most of the Anderson Okamai employees have. Lydia looks at Seb in the eyes, how does this measure up to your last job? Seb, I'm not sure. I can't remember much before I hit my head in the shake. Lydia, oh great, you're injured too. You're not going to try and sue us as well as you. I've only just managed to pay off some woman who was harassing us. Seb, why was she harassing you? Lydia smiles, I can't tell you that, honey. Even if you do have nice eyes. Seb suggests, what if I swear I won't sue Anderson Okamai for the memory loss? Lydia places her hands on her hips, that sounds like a deal. Just sign here. After he signs a form Lydia speaks out, okay, great. Well, the woman's husband came in voluntarily to test out a new product and she claimed he never came back. We managed to persuade her that he left Anderson Okamai safe and sound. Whatever happened to him after that wasn't our concern. Seb, so what did happen to him? Lydia replies, it's not my job to ask internal questions, honey. Lydia comments to the others which have been working all this time removing the bricks, is anyone else really warm? It's sweltering in here, Seb, be a gent and take my jacket, will you? In this point Tammy approaches them both, we're not in a restaurant, for goodness sake. Carry your own jacket and follow us. As they help out continuing on with throwing away the bricks and the rubble from their path they continue on to the next floor. At this point Sir Arthur goes nearby McRule and begins annoying him. McRule, this ape won't leave me alone. Go away. I don't have bananas in my pocket like Seb. Lydia confused, I beg your pardon? Tammy, I think Sir Arthur is hungry again, look out for anything we can give him. McRule, sure. As long as the ape is well fed. I'm happy to go without. Tammy looks at him, okay. McRule looks at the walking away Tammy, you know I was being sarcastic, right? After they were barely able to feed the ape with anything at all they found as they cleared off more bricks and rubble, they didn't only manage to find some food for it but as well they managed to find the staircase for the lower floor so they continued on moving. As they entered the floor Seb instantly warns, watch out. There's glass everywhere. The robot, correct, sir. I believe this is what remains of the observation areas. Tammy looked at the scene then commented, I've heard about those. Researchers would watch people trying out their new products through one-way mirrors. Some of the glass must have smashed in the shake. Tammy thought for a moment then spoke out, oh, maybe Sir Arthur was testing the new products. Lydia comments, honey, I'm not sure an ape could fill out the feedback form. Honestly, his signature is disgraceful. Seb looking towards the floor, either way, this place gives me the creeps. Anyone could be watching us and we wouldn't know it. Seb turns towards the team, let's get out of here. And be careful of the glass. 
as they moved on staying away from the glass, removing more bricks and stones avoiding more metal plates, and even deactivating more batteries they found by coincidence, they made out their way through to the staircase. As they enter the next floor, and begin exploring it a bit, Sir Arthur comes back running towards Tammy. Tammy, I think Sir Arthur's trying to show us something. Look, he's holding a memory card. Seb takes the card and gives it a careful examination, the card holds the letters A inside a big O made of yellow metal, placed on a blue electronic little card, mostly the A and O are for Anderson Okamai. Seb comments, it might tell us where he's escaped from. Lydia can we use your tablet to check the memory card? Lydia handles her tablet, and when Seb tries to install it and check it comes the surprise. Seb, hmm. The files are encrypted. Bot, are you any good are unscrambling data? The bot answers, affirmative. Commencing decryption of first file. McRule comments out of worry, I really think we should focus on getting out of here, not solving the ape's identity crisis. Seb replies, we can keep going while bot unscrambles the data. Come on. As the bot continues on its work, the team once more continues on working removing more bricks broken things, more stones, avoiding metal plates, and any battery they find in their way they deactivate it quickly, until they reach the next floor. When they reach the floor, suddenly the robot gives a report, document decrypted. Seb takes a look and begins reading. 2. Members of H278 Project. From. Dr. Urcher, Senior Researcher. Subject. Confidentiality. Due to the growing concern over project-sensitive information, I would like to remind you all of the H-278 non-disclosure agreement. Confidentiality is of the utmost importance. To this end, refrain from discussing any details with colleagues outside this department, including occupational safety and health. Any leaks international or otherwise, that potentially jeopardize this project will be considered a criminal matter. Best. Dr. Urcher. Tammy comments, H-278, that was written on that chair prototype, and Dr. Urcher, that's the name bot mentioned. Seb faces Lydia, Lydia, do you know anything about this? Lydia answers, H-278 is the name of the project they're working on in the lower levels. That's all I know, honey. Lydia comments, which means the confidential memo actually worked. Seb asks, bot how many more files lies here on the memory card? The bot, for, sir. Seb, keep working on them. Tammy wonders, what's wrong, Seb? You seem agitated. Seb, I'm not sure, but something doesn't feel right. As they continue on removing bricks from their path, descending through the current floor to the lower one, the robot gives a new report. Robot, document decrypted. 2. Members of H278 Project. From. Dr. Urcher, Senior Researcher. Subject. Stage 2. Congratulations, team. Our failure rate has fallen to under 50%, which is a remarkable achievement, given in the time frame. We will begin stage 2 tomorrow with primates hashtag 1 to number 99. Reports suggest that our competitors are at least 6 months behind with this technology. But we need to act now to retain our head start. Can I take this opportunity to thank you for your discretion and ask that you continue to keep all H-278 information private and confidential. Best. Dr. Urcher. Seb scratching his head asks, Tammy. Can you make any sense of this? Tammy answers, I'd never ever heard of H-278 before today. I guess Sir Arthur is one of the primates though, poor fella. Sir Arthur comments, oh 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 ee 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 ah ah. Seb comments, perhaps the quake saved him from being tested on? Tammy comments, unless he was already tested on. He is wearing a t-shirt, after all. Tammy turns to the robot, bot, has Sir Arthur been tested on already? And what happened to that woman's husband when he came to try out a new project? The robot, clearance denied. Information only accessible by Dr. Urcher. McRule begins ranting, listen, you two, I understand that you're into saving robots, and lawyers, and China cats, but, I must point out that Sir Arthur is a chimpanzee. McRule turns towards the floor, the next thing we stop for better be edible. Move. As they began clearing off the bricks and removing any kind of rubble before them Tammy talked to herself, I wonder what happened to all the other primates that were being tested on? 
they continued on removing all kinds of obstacles until they reached the next staircase. As they enter the new floor Tammy notices something, hey look, it's a piece of the company newsletter, from before the earthquake. She takes it and clears it from all the dust over it and reads. Janitorial staff are still trying to establish the cause, in light of which it seems wise to ask that all employees refrain from using the toilets at this time. 100,000th Voyage The flagship vessel of the Anderson Okamai Aviation Department the hypersonic AO-1 recently made its 100,000th voyage. This breathtaking driverless aircraft flew from London to Tokyo in 1 hour 20 minutes. We should all be very proud to be associated with such an incredible feat of engineering. Once she finished reading, she notices that everyone finished clearing the rubble and are waiting her to join them and so she does. In the next floor, upon entering Lydia instantly comments, what's that noise? Tammy, it sounds like someone trying to clear away the rubble. They've come to rescue us. The robot, you may be correct, miss. I am detecting two additional life forms nearby. Behind a big flat piece of wood Seb can hear clearly a sound from the other side. The person is coughing, is anyone there? Seb replies, over here. Are you hurt? The person replies, not hurt my boy, just trapped. This bookcase has blocked me in. Tammy concerned, will help move it? Is there anyone with you? The person answers, ah, is that Miss Tammy? You always were a kind girl. I remember your first day here, it's just me there's no rush. I have plenty of books to read. Seb asks, do you know him? Tammy answers, it sounds like D.O.M., the janitor. We've got to rescue him. The person, maybe you can use my mop as leverage. As they began removing the bookcase they at last managed to move it away, only to see an orange-haired cap-wearing old guy with glasses sitting down on the rubble reading a book. The old guy asterisk cough cough asterisk nice of you all to join me over here, would anyone care for a short story? McRule instantly replies, not interested, unless you can tell us a story about how to get to the exit without the ceiling caving in on us huh? The old guy D.O.M. replies, as it happens, I do know a quicker way down. There's a manual hoist to the east of the building which should be working. I use it to go to the lower levels. McRule questions, and why would you be in the lower levels? D.O.M., cough cough these young scientists spend so much time over formulas that they forget the simplest necessaries of innovation, like keeping the electricity supply going. With the amount of power the lower level takes up, I'm down there fixing the supply so often that I have my own key card. Follow me if you want to get to the hoist. As he stood up D.O.M. mentions one more thing, and watch out for the internal window over there, someone is stalking back and forth behind it. Tammy asks, what? Someone's trapped behind that partition. We should help them. D.O.M. replies, my girl, I didn't say they were trapped. They are searching for something, and I wouldn't get in their way. Seb concerned asks, who is that? It looks like they're wearing a hazardous material suit. The unknown guy in suit notices them. D.O.M. comments, I would be more concerned about what, or who, they are looking for. Upon seeing the guy McRule calls out, we need to leave, now. Tammy notices that Sir Arthur went into rampage and ran away, Sir Arthur is freaking out. Come back here. D.O.M. facing the new path, let him go, we'll see him again. The whole team began following Dom's lead and escaping from the hazmat suit guy, as they reached the next floor Tammy asked, why did Sir Arthur run away? I thought we were friends. Seb replying, it was when he saw that man wearing the hazmat suit through the partition. Seb looks towards Tammy, do you think that man could be Dr. Urcher? If Urcher was experimenting on Sir Arthur it would explain why the chimp ran away from him. McRule ignoring them both asks D.O.M., how much farther is this hoist old man? Perhaps you should just give us the directions now in case you don't make it. D.O.M. replies, cough cough look, lad. I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. You're going to be quiet and follow me. Or perhaps I'll forget how the hoist works when it gets to your turn. I am only an old man, after all. McRule out of rage keeps quiet as they continue on following D.O.M. through the floor to the lower level. Seb asks, D.O.M., do you have any idea what happened to the building? What was that shake? D.O.M. replies, my boy, I'm not sure, but something tells me it wasn't an earthquake. Seb confused, what makes you say that? D.O.M. answers, 
the email which says the shake wasn't an earthquake, it just came through on Lydia's internet email. Seb stopped for a moment, what? Seb asks Lydia the tablet and reads the email. Alert. Survivors of the apocalypse. This is not spam. I have hacked into your email addresses to tell you not to believe the cover-up. The shake wasn't an earthquake or natural disaster I know the answer if you are reading this come to floor 22. Sorry, just realized Cap's lock was on. From Captain Amazeballs. Seb just finished reading the mail, what the? DOM comments, the hoist is before floor 22 whoever Captain Amazeballs is, it doesn't look like we'll get to meet him. Tammy concerned, can we email him back? We might be able to help. The robot answers, unfortunately not, miss. The internet signal has already disappeared. McRule replied without any concerns, I'm sure Captain Amazeballs can handle himself. Let's go. As they move on, suddenly DOM speaks out, be careful everyone. Tammy out of the shock, oh no. What is it? DOM answers, the toilets on this floor have flooded again, but don't worry, my mop will make short work of this. As they all wait for him to finish off working they explore a bit of the floor, removing some bricks to get some more space. Once DOM is done, they all continue on their path towards the lower floor and the place where the manual hoist is waiting for them. As they approach the next floor, everything is so dark, and they can barely see anything, suddenly Tammy screams, Seb. Help me. The ground is moving. And she's about to lose her balance and fall down. Seb hurries up to her, Tammy. Grab hold of my hand. As Seb helps Tammy, she asks, what was that? The robot answers, those, Miss Tammy, are conveyor belts. They are often used in long corridors to help people move faster. Seb is shocked, that's ridiculous. This building is no way long enough to warrant such excesses. McRule comments sarcastically as he's checking the belt, we are a transportation company. We have to set an example. And ideas like this are immort, whoa. And he falls down on the belt. McRule surprised, it's moving. As he is being moved away he looks towards Seb, get me off this thing. As the team helps out McRule, the robot informs them that those belts will now be encountered quite often just like the steel plates, battery cells, and the bricks. The team quickly learns how to use these belts to their own advantages and to escape the floor using them towards the staircase of the next floor. Upon entering the next floor DOM begins feeling dizzy, I have to tell you, folks. I'm finding it harder to breathe. Lydia looks towards him, I guess you can lean on me if you need to, honey. I'll help carry you. Tammy hearing that she as well comments, yeah, me too. We'll help you, DOM. The robot notices them both so it turns towards them and says, I can confirm that I will also come to your assistance should you require it. Seb seeing them ready for aid he offers it as well, I'll help too, DOM. McRule was totally silenced trying to see the floor's landscape, he turns around and see everyone staring at him, why is everyone looking at me? Tammy asks, aren't you going to tell DOM that you'll help him? McRule with a cold face turns away from her and looks back towards the floor, sorry, I don't believe in lying. I'm moral like that. Tammy was about to give McRule a good one on the back but Seb stopped her telling her to save her energy for removing the bricks, and before they even began, Tammy shouts, oh no. My lucky china cat has disappeared. McRule commented sarcastically, maybe it thinks it'll be luckier without you. McRule commented sarcastically, maybe it thinks it'll be luckier without you. Before Tammy's arm reached McRule's head from the back she notices a piece of paper on the ground, she cleans it from the dust and reads. Roles available, Junior Researchers X4, Legal Secretary, Primate Hand Lurks 1. Do not party like it's 1999 it has recently been discovered that some of the maintenance robots are neglecting their duties and congregating for music and socializing. This is strictly against company policy. If you are responsible for a robot, please report any prolonged absence to IT for immediate reprogramming. After reading this she looks at the robot with them as she's helping out. She turns back towards the paper, then comments in a low voice, even if she's a robot, she doesn't look like she'll malfunction anytime soon, besides there's barely any power so I highly doubt there will be any music around. Tammy drops the paper and helps the others clearing off the floor, forgetting altogether she was mad at McRule earlier. 
Once they at last were able to clear three floors one after another without breaks, D.O.M. coughs very hard. D.O.M., coughs twice my time has come, I can't go any further, you must, go on without me. McRule not even looking at him, see you then. Tammy rushes towards D.O.M., no. D.O.M., we're in this together. You're part of the team. Lydia approaches them both, plus you know where the hoist is. Seb walks towards them and holds Dom's shoulder, come on, D.O.M. We're not leaving anyone behind. What's the point in reaching our destination if others suffer in the process? McRill looks towards him with widely opened eyes, ha. Huh? Seb confused, what's so funny? McRill instantly turns away looking towards the floor, nothing, nothing. As they move on towards the next floor suddenly they hear a very weird sound. Tammy, gasp can anyone hear that? It sounds like a child crying. Seb listens carefully and indeed there's someone crying, you're right, it's coming from below. McRule instantly comments, please don't tell me we have to rescue someone else. It's bad enough following a coughing grandpa over here. D.O.M. looks towards the team, unfortunately I can't deny it's getting harder to breathe. I'll only slow you down clearing that wreckage. Tammy instantly comments, but we can't leave you here. Lydia approaches him and looks towards Tammy, it's okay, I'll carry on with him to the hoist. We can't have him dying, just think of the paperwork. McRule turning away from them towards another path, great. I'll go that way too. It doesn't take four of us to rescue a kid. Seb holds McRule's shoulder, no chance. McRule. You're with us now let's hurry. As Seb and Tammy with the robot begin moving McRule disgustingly is forced to move with them, but before he even moves he notices a paper on the ground, only for the sake of wasting time for an excuse he takes it and cleans it from the dust and reads. Employees are reminded that the cleaning bots are not to be reprogrammed to wash dishes in the kitchen areas, you are responsible for cleaning your own dishes. Thank you. Bold over don't forget. This month is the company annual bowling competition. The current champions the legal eagles captained by Lydia, will be defending their crown against all challengers. Get your team name down early to avoid a lawsuit. After reading this torn paper, McRule comments to himself, Lydia the lawyer is a captain of a bowling team. Suddenly he heard Seb calling him, so he follows them towards the lower floor. In the next floor upon entering Tammy comments, the dust is so thick around here. I can hardly breathe. Seb concerned, just take small, slow breathes. McRule being sarcastic again, or no breathes at all. Tammy this time really enraged, shut up, McRule. Tammy noticing the temperature, has anyone else noticed how hot it is in here? The robot replies, affirmative, my internal thermometer indicates the temperature is steadily rising. Tammy worried, I hope that's not a fire. Seb looks towards the windows, if only that fog outside had cleared. We could check for smoke. Tammy even more concerned now, we better hurry up and find that crying child. As they removed the bricks and the steel plates fallen from floors from above, they managed to reach the staircase at last. As they entered the next floor the robot asked, Sir, are you well? I have determined that your noise levels have reduced. Seb turning towards the robot, Yeah, thanks, but I'm okay. Just trying to figure everything out. Tammy commented, Good idea. Well let's look at the clues. Tammy enthusiastically spoke out, I always said that if I wasn't a legal secretary, I'd make an amazing detective. Tammy begins gathering information and making conclusions so far, so, you're a scientist interning here, and on your first day the building shakes, you hit your head and lose your memory. We can't see out of the windows, and it appears that the building is falling down around us. Tammy turns towards the robot, now, bot seems to know what's happening to the building but she'll only tell Dr. Urcher. We can assume Dr. Urcher is in charge of this H-278 project that the scientists are working on in the lower levels from the memos that Bot is decrypting. Tammy turns towards the floor and thinks more, Urcher's doing tests on primates including Sir Arthur, who ran away when he saw the guy in the hazmat suit, so we can assume that he is Dr. Urcher. In which case, D.O.M. said that he was looking for someone, but we don't know who that is. McRule yawns, wake me up once you're finished playing detective. Tammy didn't even give him a dime of attention she turns towards Seb and continues, also, Lydia mentioned a man who came into Anderson Okamai to try out a new product but never returned, could he have been trying out H278? 
Tammy looks towards the ceiling, oh, almost forgot that chair we saw ages ago had H-278 written on the side of it so it must be to be with the secret project. Seb is convinced, that sounds about right. Well done, Tammy. But we're still no closer to figuring out what it means. As they move on through the floor, suddenly Seb speaks out, I just remembered another clue. Sir Arthur was wearing a t-shirt bot, can you tell us why? The robot answers, affirmative. Although I would describe his as more of a vest. The vests are color-coded to indicate which test group the subject belongs to. Tammy surprised, bot, you told us something useful. So we know Sir Arthur has been attested on. The question is what was he testing? The robot replies, access denied. McRule comments, I can still hear that brat crying shouldn't we get a move on? McRule comments, I can still hear that brat crying shouldn't we get a move on? As they began continuing on their path, Seb noticing a piece of paper on the ground, out of curiosity he takes it and cleans it from the dust and reads. Several complaints last Tuesday when monkey noises could be heard over the company connectors. Management remind all staff that practical jokes like this will not be tolerated in the workplace. Efficiency drive take a moment to think how you could save the company money. It's the little things that add up. Try boiling the kettle less often, eating less of the complimentary biscuits, stealing less stationery, or taking a pay cut. Seb throws it away and follows his friends to the lower floor through the staircase. As they entered the next floor the robot reports, another internal email has been received on this tablet. Seb takes a look. Alert. Survivors of the apocalypse. Highlight priority email. No one has yet arrived at floor 22. If it's answers you're looking for, then seek me out on the 22nd floor. If you need directions email back, do not reply all, as it's really annoying. From. Captain Amazeballs. Tammy asks, shall we email back? They might know what's going on. Seb thinks for a moment, if I'm honest, I think we'll get more answers from decrypting the files than from someone called Captain Amazeballs. McRule comments, I hate to admit it, but I agree with Seb. Seb turns towards the robot, bot, block those emails from coming through. The robot, affirmative, sir. As the robot began programming the tablet to ignore the mails, Seb told his friends to begin removing the bricks and out of the coincidence the very brick he was about to begin clearing had a little piece of paper over it, out of curiosity again Seb takes the paper clears the dust and reads. Our maintenance bot supplier Taymantix has confirmed that the personality software in the R103 series does contain a major bug but is not considered dangerous. The manufacturer is working on a software update. Nuisance spammer over the past few weeks, nuisance emails have been spamming our internal network by an unidentified employee under the alias Captain Amazeballs. Please report any suspicious activity immediately. Seb drops a sweat of the shock and tells himself, it's good that I asked the robot to block the emails. As he returns to his senses he helps out the team clearing off more bricks as the bot is still decrypting the memos. As the move on towards the next floor the sound is getting louder of the little kid crying. Tammy, the crying is louder here. She yells, don't worry. We're coming to get you. McRule comments sarcastically again, yeah, because that won't scare a kid at all. Seb tries to identify which room the sound is coming from, sounds like the bawling is coming from that room. McRule leans towards the wall, I'll wait here while you go and get the brat. Seb looks towards him, keep with us, McRule. Watch our backs and make sure Urcher isn't following. McRule, fine, I'll look out for you as usual. Seb looks towards the room he mentioned, right, let's rescue that brat, ahem I mean child. The moment he said brat everyone looked at him, and once he corrected it, Tammy calmed down and the robot is mere observing McRule sent out a laugh, and they moved on towards that room together. As they enter the room together more rubble before them as they cleared it Tammy called, where are you? We're here to help. A crying sound comes from a nearby desk, I'm scared. Seb rushes towards it only to find out a blonde little blue-eyed girl, she's over here, under the desk. The girl is crying she speaks to Seb, where's my daddy? I don't like it here. Tammy looks towards McRule as he replies to her look, don't look at me, she's not mine. Tammy speaks to the little girl, I'm sure your daddy's fine. He's probably outside, which is where we're going. Tammy helps the little girl to stand up, what's your name? And what's that on your ankle? 
the little girl trying to stop crying, I, I'm Betsy. They put this on me when I came in. I, I don't feel very well. I'm too hot. Seb looks at the tag, it's the same type of tag as Sir Arthur's. Bot, scan it. The robot scans, data reads, HS test subject hashtag 05. Seb shocked, test subject. Betsy, what happened when you came here? Betsy, I, I don't remember. I was with daddy. He was happy, said we were going to have a vacation if we answered some questions. But there was a big rumble and a light, and... I can't remember. Sobs. Tammy comforting her, it's okay, we're going to get you out of here and back to your dad. The moment they went outside the room, Betsy suddenly stops, wait. Where's small Ted? Seb, huh? Betsy, my Teddy. I brought him in with me. McRoll looks at the ceiling then towards Seb, in case I need to spell this out, we are not going back for a Teddy. Betsy, looks towards him with tearing widely opened eyes, P, please. McRoll looks at his friends, and is about to slap himself on the forehead when he sees how Seb and Tammy are looking at him with such hate, and how much they're both concerned about reuniting Betsy with her Teddy. Seb and Tammy return into the room as McRoll follows slowly, and the moment he reaches the door he slams his forehead with it, and then enters the room. Finding the lost Teddy didn't really take that long at all. Upon finding it Betsy thanked everyone for helping her out and together they continued to the lower floor. As they enter it, Tammy notices the weird number of files thrown everywhere. Tammy, there are files everywhere on this floor. The cabinet must have burst open in the shake. Betsy's attention is taken by a weird looking blue paper. McRule comments, come on, kid. We don't have time to look at the pictures. Betsy turns towards them and says, but, but, this drawing, it's the same as before. This chair was in the room with my daddy and the scary people. Her comment bring up Seb's attention so he approaches her, what have you picked up? He takes a look, and it looks like a blueprint for a weird looking chair capsule. The paper reads. Beware hazardous materials. Subatomic particles electromagnetic waves ionized plasma side effects, nausea disorientation temporary memory loss. Seb, there's that word again, H278. Yet this time it seems whatever they're doing involves testing on Betsy and her dad. Tammy worried comments, Anderson Okamai would never do that. This is an ethical company. Seb looks towards her, perhaps the bosses don't know? This Dr. Urcher seems pretty keen on confidentially. Tammy now even more worried, oh no. If the guy in the hazmat suit is Urcher, he might be looking for Betsy to keep her quiet about testing. Or Sir Arthur. Seb replies, we've got to get them out of here before he finds them. As they begin leaving the floor towards the lower one, more bricks and battery cells to take care of and some even more metal plates. Upon entering the next floor Seb is kind of wondering what happened to the rest of the memory card files so he asks. Seb, bot, are you still decrypting those other files? The robot answers, negative. Seb turns towards the robot, huh? Bot, those files are important. The robot replies, and so are manners, sir. Everyone confused what's going on, Tammy asks, oh, bot, are you upset about something? The robot answers, Affirmative. Seb crosses his both arms and asks, well, you might have to give us a clue. The robot replies, sir, my workload to appreciation ratio is below the required threshold. Seb releases his crossed arms, the what now? Tammy, I think I get it. We haven't thanked bot for decrypting the previous files. Seb beginning to get it, oh bot. Is that the problem? The robot answers reluctantly, affirmative. McRule comments sarcastically, wonderful. Now the robot's turning into a prima donna. What next? Seb gives a soft smile and approaches the robot shaking her hand, bot, of course we're grateful. Sorry, there's just been a lot going on. But thanks. The robot replies, that means a lot to my internal circuit board, sir. Once Seb steps away the robot speaks out, decrypting the next file now. As the team begun clearing their path again, the robot worked on the files, and once they approach the beginning of the new floor, the robot announces, document decrypted. Seb approaches the tablet and begins reading. 2. Members of H278 Project. From. Dr. Urcher, 
Senior Researcher. Subject. Database Malfunction. Team, we lost some of the records from Stage 2 overnight due to a power surge on our server. The IT department is not authorized access to our project, so we're going to have to ignore the lost test data. Overall, Stage 2 is commencing with minimal failure rates, and we are still ahead of the competitors. If we keep up this level of progress, we will have H278 ready for our clients within months, as always if you have any concerns, please discuss directly with me. Best. Dr. Urcher. Seb looks at the robot, good work, bot. The he looks towards his friends and sees Tammy quite angry, Tammy, are you alright? Tammy replies in rage, yeah, I'm okay, I just want to get out of this place. And once we do, I never want to work for Anderson Okamai again. Seb asks, I thought you liked it in here? Tammy replies, I did. They hired me when I was rejected everywhere else. Tammy lowers her face a little bit and speaks in rage, but how could they employ someone like Urcher? He's so desperate for this H-278 to be ready that he's testing on humans, on children. Tammy raises her head facing Seb, I'm never coming back. I wish I'd never set foot in this building. Seb looks towards her, well, I'm glad you did. Tammy looks at him with confusion. Seb, I don't mean I'm pleased you're in danger or anything. Just, I'm glad that I met you. Tammy cheers up a bit, really. McRool suddenly interferes, sorry, I couldn't help overhearing. Both of them look towards him. McRool, I'm happy I met you too. Then he turns towards the new floor, if it weren't for you both, I'd probably be home safely by now. Without even looking he can easily feel all of them looking at him with half an eye closed. As they continue on to the next floor, suddenly. Seb, who's that slumped on the floor over there? Tammy takes a look and hurries towards him, it's D.O.M. What's wrong? Are you hurt? The old guy turns towards her, merely taking a break cough cough Lydia's gone to fetch my medicine and bring it back to me. Seb looking at the floor landscape, you know, I don't think she's coming back. D.O.M. looks at Seb, trust me when I say she will do her best to get that medication. Dom's words remind Seb that Lydia indeed is a lawyer, and she's not ready to welcome more paperwork and court records for a dead janitor in a building. D.O.M. looks towards Lydia and notices something, I can see someone hiding behind your leg, Tammy. Tammy looks towards her back, oh. This is Betsy. She's lost her dad. Betsy comes out from behind Tammy, hello mister. D.O.M., nice to meet you, Betsy, but something tells me we're already met. D.O.M. sits down, I saw you this morning when you were escorted to the lower levels with your father. To tell the truth that's been happening a lot recently. Course, I assume there's an exit down there, as some people don't come out again. Seb asks, did you ever see Dr. Urcher when you were in the lower levels? D.O.M. answers, I'm not going to lie, I recognize the name. But the likes of me aren't allowed inside the research room's cough cough. Tammy worried, Seb, we need to get him that medication. Seb replies, I agree. If we keep going we might catch up with Lydia. As they move out after Lydia D.O.M. picks up a paper from nearby and reads it. You may have noticed the addition of bananas to the communal fruit bowls. This is because the company cares for your nutrition. We want to make sure you all have enough fiber and vitamins to be productive and happy at work. Accident at work have you had an accident at work? If so, speak to Lydia from the legal team and she can advise on your rights. Please note that term 5.12 of the employment contract expressly forbids employees from having accidents under any circumstances. D.O.M. laughs very hard once he finishes reading it, they forbid the employees from having any accidents under any circumstance. D.O.M. gets up and follows the team. As they all continue on moving after Lydia suddenly the smartwatches turn on and a weird sound comes out of it. Smartwatch, crackle, help me, crackle, anyone? Tammy, did you hear that? Seb, it's coming from the smartwatch. Tammy surprised, a connector. I thought they were all broken. Tammy speaks into the watch, hello. Who's there? The smartwatch, crackle, help, lost my daughter, trapped. Betsy intently begins screaming happily, daddy. That's my daddy. Tammy instantly asks, where are you? The smartwatch, not sure, headsets everywhere, crackle, need help. 
Tammy thinks, headsets everywhere. He must be in the customer call center. That's only four floors down. Tammy shouts at the smartwatch, we've got Betsy. It's okay, we're coming to help. The smartwatch, don't let, Dr. Urcher, find. At this very moment McRule had his enough. McRule, help all you want. I'm going my own way. Seb replies him, seriously. You aren't going to come with us? We've got a duty to help these people. Seb trying to convince him, it might take a while longer, but we must make personal sacrifices to benefit the ground as a whole. McRule replies, now where have I heard those words before? McRule looks at Seb, nah, forget it, Seb. I'll find a faster way down without you. As he passes by all of them reaching towards the staircase alone he gives one last word, laters, amigos. As he goes away, the team continues on their way without him. As they begin examining the next floor's rooms the robot suddenly gives a new report, document decrypted. Seb takes the tablet and begins reading. 2. Members of H-278 Project. From. Dr. Urcher, Senior Researcher. Subject. Stage 3. Great news. Based on our recent results, we are ready to commence stage 3. There are still side effects and the occasional failure, yet we feel we have learned all we can from primates. I'm aware of the safety concerns, and I can assure you no one is more conscious of helping mankind than myself. This creation will change the way we live, and most likely save lives in the long run, so please bear that in mind when developing H-278. Our competition is no doubt using the same methods we are. Do not let our hard work go unrecognized by allowing them unveil H-278 technology before us. Time is of the essence. Best. Dr. Urcher. Tammy asks, what do you think these safety concerns are? Seb, perhaps all those side effects we saw listed on that H-278 blueprint? Seb notices something, talking of Dr. Urcher. Is that him? Tammy looks towards the window in the door, the guy in the hazmat suit. He just walked past our corridor. I can see him through the door's window. The scene shows the guy in the orange suit searching through the room across. Tammy, he, he's terrifying. D.O.M., terrifying, dangerous, and determined, threatening, deadly, and... Well, you got the idea. Seb wonders, what does he want? D.O.M. wonders, what fool stalks through a crumbling building? Whatever he wants, it's worth more than his life. Suddenly the guy turns towards them. Tammy, gasp he's seen us. Seb, let's go. Tammy, quick. He's coming. And the team begins clearing the rubble in a mad speed. They rush towards the next floor, and out of the shock it's filled with rubble. Tammy comments, he's catching up. Seb moving the rubble, don't look back. Just keep clearing the rubble. As they remove even more rubble the guy is approaching even closer. They dash their way towards the next floor, and there's yet more rubble to clear. Betsy beside Tammy, I'm scared. Tammy clearing the rubble as fast as she can, he's terrifying. What does he want with us? D.O.M. helping out, I am unsure, my girl. But I do know that I want to keep running. Seb takes a quick peek behind him and rushes himself with clearing the rubble even more, he's not giving up. Keep going. The robot weirdly worried, I can confirm that I am in danger of a system dump. As they quickly remove even more rubble the place gets even more unstable. As they all escape through the hole they created, more rubble fall down blocking the entrance as D.O.M. is watching the guy in the hazmat suit pointing at them in rage. As they all begin catching up their breathe, Betsy comments, that was scary. A weird noise comes out, Betsy. Betsy, is that you? Betsy recognizes the voice, Daddy. Tammy looks around the place, we must be in the call center. Betsy's dad is here somewhere. The voice, I'm under here, trapped under this metal girder. Seb with the team hurries towards the place, and sees the situation. Seb, we can lift it off you, say still. Seb lowers himself grunt, there we go. A brown-haired brown-eyed man with glasses comes out beneath the metal girder. And instantly Betsy jumps towards him. The man, thank you so much. Oh Betsy, I'm so glad you're safe. D.O.M. concerned standing a little bit away from the team, Sebastian, my boy. Come here. 
Seb goes to D.O.M. waiting to hear what's going on. D.O.M., Kaus you might not believe this, but I know what that fellow in the hazmat suit wants. D.O.M. looks towards Seb in the eyes, you. Seb backs away two steps, me. Why could Urcher want me? I'm just an intern. D.O.M. replies, I only know what I saw, and I saw him point at you as we fled. Suddenly Betsy mentions, Daddy, I can smell burning. Her father, wait, so can I looks like you guys saved me just in time. I'll grab this fire extinguisher. Get behind me, Betsy. And indeed as they continued on through the floor, the fire was everywhere. Betsy's father did his work getting rid of it, as the rest of the team began moving the rubble away. As they moved through the next floor, Betsy spoke with her father. Betsy, Daddy, we saw a creepy man. Her father looked at her and stopped moving, who? Was it the same person we saw when we came into Anderson Okamai? Betsy lowers her head, I can't remember. Seb asks Betsy's father, do you know what happened? Why were you and your daughter here in the first place? Betsy's father replies, when I woke up after the rumble, I couldn't remember a thing. Then it gradually came back to me. Everyone stopped as Betsy's father began taking, I brought Betsy here to do something market research for Anderson Okamai I saw an ad on a money, saver website offering free flights if we tried out a new product. They needed an adult and a child, we were taken into a horrible dark room and had to sit in some strange chair. I began to suspect something was up when a man in black jacket clamped these tags on our ankles. I told him I wanted out, but he just ignored me. He kept talking to someone called Urcher through his connector. Betsy was so scared. There was this piercing sound, an orange light and a huge rumble around me. Betsy's father lowers his head, after that, I can't remember anything until I woke up trapped underneath that girder. Betsy's father looks towards his daughter, I'll. I'll never forgive myself for putting Betsy through this. I just wanted to take my family on vacation. Tammy asks, was anyone wearing a hazmat suit? Betsy's father, uh. I didn't see a hazmat suit anywhere. D.O.M. suddenly speaks out, you'll all be glad to know we're close to the hoist. We'll be home soon. As they began moving, suddenly Tammy speaks out, oh no. I've lost my. Seb finishes her words as he looks at her, sign China Cat. Tammy looks at him, it must have fallen out of my pocket when we were running from Urcher. As they searched a bit through the current floor, Seb at last finds the cat. Seb, Tammy. Over here. As she comes towards him to get her cat Seb asks, do you think the shake is related to whatever Betsy and her dad were testing? Tammy replies, it must be. Betsy's dad said that he felt a rumble, that must have been the shake. And they both had memory loss, which was described on that H278 sketch as a side effect of exposure. Seb thinks for a bit, memory loss, like me. Tammy concerned, oh, Seb. I didn't mean that, I. I'm sure you weren't tested on. Seb replied, it would make sense though, wouldn't it? Don't mention that Urcher pointed at me when we ran from him. He might want to keep me quiet. Or to test on me again. Tammy asks, wait a minute, do you have an ankle tag? Seb answers, no, and McRule did say I was an intern perhaps I'm not a test subject after all. Seb raises his head towards Tammy, thanks, Tammy. Tammy wondering, I wonder what happened to McRule, and Lydia. Seb sarcastically replies, maybe they're together. You know, I bet they'd make a good match. Tammy comments, oh. She's too nice for McRule, anyway, didn't you notice Lydia staring at you? Seb, no, I was probably too busy looking at why. Seb instantly blushes and pauses, well, looking somewhere, else. Suddenly the team hears a familiar voice, e e e e e e ah. Tammy, Sir Arthur. You're back. And it's waving. Tammy, he wants us to follow him. As Tammy went to welcome the monkey Seb took a deep breath, then noticed a paper on the ground nearby, he takes it and cleans the dust and reads. Staff were thoroughly confused last month when 100 kilograms of animal feed was mistakenly delivered to the canteen. In completely unrelated news, we recommend avoiding the chili con carne until further notice. Vested interest the company basketball team report with sadness that their entire collection of training vests have gone missing. These vests, in a variety of different colors were used by the teams for practice purposes. Seb, 
they're worried about their vests and we're worried about getting outside of here alive. Different interests I would say. As they move on following that monkey, they reach the door of the hoist room. D.O.M. The hoist is in the other side of that door, but it won't budge. Cough cough. Suddenly a voice comes out, D.O.M. Honey. I'm behind this door. I've got your medication. I was bringing it back to you, but I fell though some flooring. I promise I was coming back. D.O.M. replies, don't you worry, my girl. I believe you. Lydia, so, so you won't tell anyone? D.O.M., your secret dies with me, which in these circumstances, might be sooner than I'd like. Lydia, thank you. Is the chimp with you? I saw it near the hoist hiding from some idiot in a weird suit. It climbed through the broken panel above the door when it heard Tammy's voice. Suddenly Tammy's voice comes out, Ah, Sir Arthur. That's so sweet. Wait a minute. Lydia, can you throw the meds through the broken panel? Lydia, nice thinking, honey. If only you were as quick thinking as this when you were my secretary. Here you go D.O.M. And she throws the medication to him. Lydia asks, how long will it take you to force the door? Seb, I'm not sure we'll be able to. It's completely jammed. Seb turns towards the team, we'll have to keep clearing the stairs. D.O.M., Lydia, my girl. Today is the day you learn how to use that hoist. Take yourself and the chimp and get out of this building. Lydia concerned, but the hoist was going to take you all D.O.M. I can't leave you behind. Besides, the robot still has my tablet device. D.O.M. replies, you can, and you're going to. We will see you on the other side. Seb looks towards D.O.M., what? D.O.M. clarifies his word, on the other wise of these walls, we'll see her outside. Seb taking a breath, right. Perhaps we should avoid ominous phrases while we're trapped in here. Tammy, by Sir Arthur, we'll miss you. Lydia asks, what about missing me? Sir Arthur comments, oh oh ah ee. As Lydia and Sir Arthur begin using the hoist, the rest of the team goes back to the old friend the stairs. As they enter the new floor, Seb asks, D.O.M., what's the secret you have over Lydia? Is she involved in H-278? D.O.M. answers, my boy, not everything is about H-278. When Lydia was helping me down the stairs I happened to mention that I used to work at her college. I have to admit I wasn't anticipating her reaction. D.O.M. turns towards Seb and Tammy, she panicked, and blurted out that she never meant to change her qualifications on her resume, but wouldn't have been hired by Anderson Okamai without highest honors. Now Lydia isn't the kind of person to realize when she's made a mistake. I tried to explain that I had no idea about her resume and that I wasn't extorting her, but she wouldn't listen. D.O.M. looks towards the ground, because when I collapsed she was convinced that I was trying to blackmail her into fetching my meds. Perhaps I shouldn't have told you, but she doesn't deserve anyone thinking she's part of this nasty H-278 operation. D.O.M. looks at Tammy, Lydia's worked hard for what she's got and I respect that. Tammy, I can't believe Lydia lied on her resume. I always thought she was so much smarter than me. Seb tries to comfort her, I suppose everyone has their secrets. And you are smart, Tammy. We couldn't have got this far without you. Tammy flattered, thanks. Actually, I am really good at math. I could have been a mathematician if I wasn't a secretary. Ask me any multiplication and I'll get the answer. Go on anything at all. Seb excited, all right, how about 19 multiplied by 48, divided by 12, then multiplied by 51? Tammy replies, that's a hard one. Okay, wait a minute. I'll get it in a second. As they continue on Tammy needed a piece of paper to help her solving that problem Seb gave her, as she was searching the ground suddenly her eyes happen to catch a piece of paper on the floor she takes it cleans the dust and reads it. Meanwhile we are pleased to announce that sales of our new range of peeping Tom drones have increased by 43% in the past quarter. International Council for Ethics Summit sadly, due to budgetary restraints, no company representative is able to travel to the ISIS this year. Nevertheless, industrial ethics is a subject we are deeply committed to, and we intend to send a full delegation next year. Tammy finished reading this paper only to find it having another individual paper sticking to its back. So she decided to read the second one as well. Laboratory staff, 
please remember that the hazardous material suits are important pieces of company safety equipment, and not to be used for practical joke purposes. Long just serving employee it will come as no surprise to you to learn that Dominic the janitor has now surpassed the employment tenure record, previously held by Akira Okamai himself. We would like to thank Dominic for all his years of hard work and bravery, most notably the traumatic third floor men's lavatory flood of 1987. Here's to many more, D.O.M. Tammy smiles, D.O.M. indeed deserved that reward back then, he's truly a hard-working janitor and a great friend to us all. Forgetting the reason that she took the paper at first to begin with, she simply joins the team in clearing the rubble. As they cleared the rubble Seb as always leading the team suddenly is shocked by more rubble coming down he's forced to jump away, being uninjured he tells the team to continue on, believing they're behind him clearing the rubble that just fell down he continued on clearing more bricks until something catches him from the back. Seb, whoa. Someone grabbed me. A weird red-haired green-eyed guy with glasses replies, easy mate. I've rescued you. This is my survival den. You'll be safe here. The guy steps away from Seb once they're in the weird den, but don't thank me. I learned these skills to save lives, not to be thanked. Seb looks around him, huh. But, where are the others? The guy confused, there were others. Oh well, forget about them. The guy crosses his arms and nods as he says, the first rule of disaster survival is lone warriors have better odds. Seb asks, so then, why did you rescue me? The guy reluctantly answers, well, I need to show someone my den, aside from Captain Amazeballs here. Seb wondering, please don't tell me that's what you call yourself. The guy replies, what? No, mate. That'd be a bit strange. The guy smiles, I'm Keenan otherwise known as your disaster survival expert. The guy then points towards a little figure, Captain Amazeballs is this cool dude. He's my best friend. Seb takes a look and it's nothing but a mere American football player little action figure holding a football with its little hand. As Seb returned to continue his way through the next floor and began removing the rubble before him, Keenan came for the help and as they both were working together removing bricks and other things, Seb suddenly remembers a little thing. Seb, wait a second, earlier we got two emails from Captain Amazeballs. Seb looks at Keenan, were they from you? Keenan without even looking at Seb's direction replies, Confidential, mate. No one is supposed to know the source of those emails. Keenan looks with a little smirk at Seb, they're anonymous. Keenan stops for a moment then comments, but maybe if you went back to floor 22 you'd find a mysterious figure with their face covered who would give you the answers. Seb looks at him and stands, is that just going to be you with something covering your head? Keenan began breaking sweat as he shouts, no. Seb rolling his eyes then looking at Keenan, look, we haven't got time to go back to floor 22. So just tell me what you know. Seb asks directly, what happened to the building? Keenan gets really angry but then he fixes his glasses and places a fake smile on his face as he says, fine. Luckily for you whoever wrote that email also passed some information on to me. You might want to sit down first. Seb still standing he raises an eyebrow seeing before him this teenager trying to fake himself as a cool guy. Keenan, drum roll please. Seb rolls his eyes waiting for the guy to speak out as he drum rolls for himself I his mind. Keenan, it's not an earthquake. Keenan closes his right hand making it into a punch and raises it before his face, it's a zombie apocalypse. Seb with half an eye closed, huh. Keenan gets an adrenaline rush, it's so obvious. It's zombies, buddy, and they're in this building. We have to block off the stairs with shopping cars and cover ourselves in guts so the dead don't know we're living. Seb trying to make some sense here, um. I really don't think it's a zombie apocalypse. Keenan didn't even hear him, remember, always aim for the head. Seb heard enough already, maybe we should keep clearing the rule in silence. Keenan with shining glasses, good thinking. It will conserve our oxygen and prevent alerting the zombies. At this point as they were clearing what remained of the rubble Seb thought if this guy was to meet Lydia and they had talked, she'd sue him for misleading thoughts, and will make him as well to sign a one of her forms, zombies he says and it's all about H-278, and Dr. Urcher, right now I'm glad the others didn't have to endure what I am going through. At last they break through the rubble and continue on their way. As they move on towards the next floor Keenan asks, your face is familiar, what department do you work in? Seb asked, um. 
I thought we were being stealthy? Keenan replies with a great proud, don't worry. I have a sixth sense for detecting zombies. There aren't any on this floor. Seb just trying to move on with it, uh. Okay. Well I'm just an intern here. On my first day actually. Keenan looks towards Seb with a smile, ah, a newbie. Well, have no fear. I'll show you the ropes. Now I've been allowed back I'm held in pretty high regard with management you know? Keenan looks directly at Seb, pretty sure I'm being fast tracked to a promotion. But it's no big deal. Seb asks, allowed back. Keenan scratches his head, oh yeah. It's a long story actually. Seb has already heard enough about zombies, never mind then. As they cleared the next staircase and move on Keenan begins with his never asked for story. Keenan, so, a few months ago I was exploring the building, making sure everything was safe and there were no hazards around. Seb asks, you work in safety and health too, then. Keenan answers, no the call center. Anyway, I accidentally stumbled into lower levels. Keenan looks at Seb, turns out that those keep out signs really mean keep out. I only saw a few weird chairs, with apes running around them, but I was suspended from work, all the same. Keenan look at the ceiling as he's removing the rubble with Seb, they even sent people around my house to question me. My mom wasn't very happy. They didn't take their shoes off and ruined the carpet. Seb asks, why did they do that? Keenan shrugs as he answers, dunno. I guess they were worried their feet would get cold. Seb looks at Keenan for a moment and says, no. I meant why did they come around to question you? Keenan at last figuring it out, oh. I think Anderson Okamai thought I was sent from a rival company to spy on them. It was really some big misunderstanding and as soon as they realized their mistake, they reinstated me. Keenan stands up with crossed arms, I'll always remember their apology, after extensive questioning, we can safely we can say you are not the type of person who could spy on us. Keenan with a grin on his face, they must be really scared to lose me as an employee. Seb wondering, it's strange that they would be so bothered about what you saw though. What are they hiding down there? Keenan as he returns to remove the rubble, don't worry about that. You should be concentrating on avoiding the zombies. Before he even continued removing the rubble Seb said to himself, this kid indeed thinks he's too important to this company I'd hate to tell him it's really the opposite. And he continues on removing the rubble towards the next floor. Keenan suddenly asks as they enter the next floor, are you sure you were here with other people? We haven't seen anyone for ages. In a crisis, some people can't cope with the stress and start to hallucinate. I'm fully prepared for any situation, so it's not an issue for me. But you. Keenan puts his hand over his head, typical. Me and Captain Amazeballs get landed with the weirdo and his imaginary friends. Seb says again to himself, says the guy who believes in zombies. As they continue on going through the floor to the next one removing more bricks deactivating some more battery cells Keenan suddenly speaks out, I really think we should give up on finding your friends they're probably zombies by now anyway, the safest thing is to head back to my den. Seb is really getting bothered with this kid, my friends aren't zombies, or made up. Look, if you want to go then just go. But I'm not giving up on them. I have to find Tammy. Keenan surprised, oh, a girl, is it? I see mate, I see I've been there. I'm telling you that. I've had more girlfriends than I could count. And I've broken way too many hearts. Bit of free advice, don't let your girlfriend see me, unless you want to lose her. Seb, I think there's more chance of her falling for Captain Amaze balls. Keenan ignores what Seb says as he removes the rubble and checks for his zombies problem, as Seb looks towards him knowing there's no point in talking to a guy like him, he suddenly finds a little paper so he takes it and reads for a change. The company is encouraging staff meme bears to print only materials that are absolutely necessary. Where possible, don't use paper. Obviously this does not apply to this newsletter, or toilet facilities. Life Skills Keenan Doyle's Life, Skills Class will meet on floor 10 at Friday lunchtime. This week Keenan will cover desk tidiness, bear taming and how to avoid a sniper. Keenan stresses that despite a low turnout last week, it is best to arrive early or risk disappointment. Seb looks at Keenan, and thinks, he really gave survival skills to the other employees. Seb goes back to helping Keenan remove the rubble, and as they pass through it to the next floor Seb concerned, we've got to move faster. I can't let Dr. Urcher find the others. 
Keenan wonder, calm down buddy. Who's Dr. Urcher? Seb answers, some guy in a hazmat suit. He seems to be the one responsible for whatever they're doing in the tower levels. Seb looks at Keenan, he's chasing me. I don't know why. He might want to test on me, or hurt me. Keenan seeing Seb worried thinks it's time for him to play cool, well, why didn't you say something earlier? Don't worry, mate anyone who messes with you, messes with me too. Seb looks at him, I'm sure he'll be terrified to hear that. Keenan looks at the rubble before them both, unless he's a zombie, of course. In which case, you're on your own. As they finish removing more bricks and rubble, they make it to the next floor, at which Seb speaks out, look, I feel like we've got off on the wrong foot. Keenan asks, have we? Seb answers, I'm sorry if I was dismissive about your zombie idea, I'm just worried about my friends. Today has been a strange day. And finding out I'm interning at a company who tricks people into becoming test subjects has been the last straw. Keenan grins, whoa, that's intense, mate. What company is that? Seb without even looking towards Keenan he simply answers, this one obviously. Keenan loses his calm, what? That's a bit far-fetched, don't you think? Trust me rescue some crazy conspiracy theorist. Seb looks at him, er, well, whether it's true or not, I appreciate you having my back with Urcher. Keenan fixing his glasses with proud, don't mention it. I've got more survival skills than a mountain lion. I'm staying with you through thick and thin. As they enter the next floor, the dust is everywhere, and problems begin with harder breathing. Seb, cough it's getting so hard to breathe around here. I hope whatever Dr. Urcher is working on is worth all this. Keenan asks, what are you talking about, mate? You don't think the zombie apocalypse is to do with this Dr. Urcher, do you? Seb answers, I think whatever has happened to this building is to do with him, yeah. He's so desperate to finish this H-278 project that he's willing to put likes at risk. In a way, I understand it. Wanting to build something that will change the world, or the way we live. Seb looks at the ground and thinks, but this can't be the right way to go about it. Innocent people Betsy, her dad, even Sir Arthur, have been tricked. Now might not survive. And it all Urcher's fault. Keenan looks totally confused, you've lost me, but this Dr. Urcher sounds like a right slime ball. He'll be sorry once I've got my hands on him. As they are about to finish clearing the staircase of more rubble, bricks, steel plates and other types of obstacles, Seb suddenly finds a torn paper on the nearby desk, being sick worried about his friends from Dr. Urcher he thinks it's a nice way to remove some of his worries by reading it. Please make sure you keep your access card with you at all times, as this ensures you have access to the departments relevant to your responsibilities. In the light of some recent security breaches, all departmental doors locks will be activated 24-7. Lonely Heart's good-looking male seeks attractive lady friend for romance, preferably before the world ends. Must have passing resemblance to Princess Leia. Replies to Keenan Doyle. Upon reading this note, Seb thought to himself, he's so desperate that he actually seeked a girlfriend and the news. As the move on towards the next floor a very shocking surprise came out. Seb, on no that's him. That's Urcher. I can see him through the glass door. He's the one who wants to hurt me. Keenan looks towards the glass door ahead of them both, and sees him, what? He's real. Seb having some hope in the kid, you need to use those survival skills to get us out of here. Keenan breaking sweat, uh, yeah. Of course, although, then, again, the first rule of zombie survival is every man for himself. Seb looked at him with widely opened eyes, as Keenan backs away and says, if you slow him down, I can escape. Keenan sprints away with an incredible speed, see ya. Seb, wait. Keenan, come back. Seb reconsiders his situation, actually, forget it I'm better off without him, although Captain Amazeballs might have been some use. As Seb began running away from Dr. Urcher removing more rubble with his best speed, running away form him towards the next floor, once he reached the floor at last he catches a breath, then takes a look. Seb, Tammy. Tammy, it's me. Through here. Tammy looks through the hole in the wall nearby, Seb. Thank goodness. Where did you go? Seb, some guy pulled me away from the group. Wanted to show someone his den. But we ran into Dr. Urcher, and he bolted. 
Think his name was Keenan? D.O.M. asks, Keenan. Did he have a toy with him? Seb, yeah, Captain Amazeballs. D.O.M., ah, I know the lad. We had a power cut once and he tried to hit me with a laptop. Said he thought I was a zombie. I assume those emails Lydia received earlier were from him. Seb, yeah, and he certainly didn't know the answers. He'll be okay though. He ran down the stairs when we saw Urcher. He'll probably beat us to the exit. Seb regrouping with his friends, perhaps he does have some survival skills after all. Tammy with a smile, well. I'm glad you're back, Seb. And before they even leave the very floor they just met at again, Tammy notices something, Betsy, where's your teddy gone? Betsy, oh no. And the search begins to get her teddy, as they search on Tammy finds out a piece of paper she takes it, cleans the dust and begins reading. Recommend you remove all images of the dwarf unit this matter is resolved. In addition, we do not consider cat memes, bot love pictures or conspiracy theory websites to be appropriate workplace materials. Talent competition once again, entrants will try to impress the judges. Last year winners the Metal Mickeys will sadly be unable to reprise their show Stealing Robot Dance, due to a rule chne which mandates that all entrants must be human. Tammy, so for real they were bots and not humans. No wonder they danced really well previously. As they at last find the teddy, and continue on passing through the next two easily passed floors since there wasn't much rubble to be removed, they reach the next floor. Seb, some of these floors are familiar. Seb recognizing what he just said, hey, I think parts of my memory are coming back. Tammy smiles, that's brilliant, Seb. Betsy comments, mine too, daddy. I remember the nasty man who put us in the chairs. And I saw him earlier. Seb asks, are you talking about Urcher? The scary person we ran away from. Betsy's father interferes, look, we can sort all of this out later. Betsy is scared enough without all your questions. D.O.M. speaks out, don't fear, we're nearly at the ground floor. Then we can get to the bottom of this. Everyone looks at him with a weird look. D.O.M., if you'll excuse the pun. As the team is about to continue moving, D.O.M. finds a piece of torn paper, he grabs it and reads it on the way down as the others are continuing to remove the rubble off the staircase. And due to security concerns, IT have updated the password of the corporate network. It has been changed from password 1 to password 2. Please update your connectors accordingly. New recipes The award-winning Anderson Okamai Cafe is delighted to add two delicious new dishes to the menu. From next week, sausages and mash and beans on toast will be available. Patrons are advised to get there early, as stocks are likely to be limited. D.O.M. to himself, if McRool sees this paper he'd eat it straight away, how many times did he mention the cafe again? As the rubble is removed they continue on their way, Betsy speaks with her father, Daddy, are we still going on vacation after this? Her father reluctantly replies, E.R., sure, Betsy. We'll find a way. Betsy asks, and it will be hot and sunny. With lots and lots of sand? Her father again answers reluctantly, yes, I promise. As they continue on moving and Betsy's father is still thinking how to make it up for his daughter, and her request for vacation, suddenly D.O.M. reaches towards Seb in the lead. And takes a look, I don't want to case any alarm, but the next level is flooded. And I don't have my wet floor sign to put up? We better be careful. As D.O.M. works with his mop removing the flooded water, from the path towards the staircase Betsy take a look at the next level and the only thing she says. Betsy, more water. I wish I'd worn my pink wellies. Her father comes towards her and takes her away from Dom's way so he can continue his work removing the flood on the floor. As they wait Seb leans towards the wall for D.O.M. to finish his work, and notices a paper nearby him, he takes it and begins reading. In what sounds like a distressing incident, a pair of green wife fronts were found in the call center after the office party last week. Please claim from lost and found. Win a sun vacation how would you like to win an exotic holiday break for two in the sun? The research department is looking for volunteers to answer a few simple marketing case ions about their latest range of products. All candidates, young or old, are welcome and the winners will be announced at the end of the month. After reading it Seb instantly figures out this is the very ad Betsy and her father both came for. Upon finishing his work D.O.M. tells the others to continue on moving towards the next floor and so they do. Seb, 
I can see the exit. It's only one floor away. Tammy comments, oh Seb. I've never been so happy to see the exit before. D.O.M., you evidently have never had to clean the restrooms after the office Christmas party, my girl. Seb, I just keep thinking about H-278, it's a shame we never figured out what it all meant. Tammy comments, is it? I'd be happy if I never heard that word again. Now let's reach that exit. As they run through the floor removing the rubble faster than ever before. When they entered the next floor. Seb looks around the new floor, we've made it, everyone. The exit just over there. It looks familiar, wait, I think I'm starting to remember this place. Suddenly the silence of the building is broken with a huge unexpected scream from Tammy, Ah, uh. Seb, Tammy. Are you hurt? Tammy, no, no, I'm fine. But the exit's blocked. Tammy drops on her knees, all this, for nothing. D.O.M., cough cough aren't you forgetting something my girl? I have a key card for lower levels. There is almost certainly another exit down there. Seb approaches Tammy and helps her stand up, as she comments, Oh Seb, I don't think I can clear any more floors. I give up. D.O.M. stands staring at the blocked exit, My girl, the challenge you face it isn't bricks or mortar. It isn't exhaustion or aching muscles. D.O.M. begins a cheering up speech, It's not knowing. But now is the time to forget that. Forget what you've left behind and forget what's waiting for you outside. All that matters is here and now, and how we're going to get to the exit. And let me tell you how we're going to get there. At this very moment the guys began moving away slowly towards the door to the lower floors, leaving D.O.M. speech to himself to continue it alone, as he's still staring at the blocked exit. D.O.M., we are going to clear the rubble. We cleared the rubble when we were chased by strangers. We cleared the rubble while we were fighting for every breath. We even cleared the rubble when the chimp defecated himself in fear. And we can keep clearing the rubble now. And maybe, just maybe, we'll find the knowledge we're looking for in the midst of very rubble we're trying to clear. Before he even continues on Betsy goes to him, Um, mister are you coming? Everyone's gone through that door. D.O.M. fixes his glasses, so they have, my girl. So they have. Once he finished talking to her with a big smile he followed Betsy to the lower floors, knowing he did his job, convincing everyone to continue on the progress. As they progress on D.O.M. began using his keycard, and the team began progressing through the lower levels of the tower. Seb, be careful, you can't see a thing down here. Tammy nearby him, it's so dark, wait a minute, isn't that McGruel? And they see him sitting nearby a weird looking chair which is emitting some very little light. Betsy's father suddenly screams, you. McGruel looks toward him, have we met? Betsy's father rushes towards him and holds him from his shoulders, you're the man in the black jacket who put Betsy and me in those seats. You're the one who wouldn't let us leave. He raises McRule in the air, you did this. McRule calmly, ah, yes, nice to see you and your brat again. Seb shocked, is that true? Tammy worried, are you Urcher? McRule replies calmly, no, genius, I'm McRule, like I told you. Yet come to think about it, yes, I was down here when the rumble happened and yes, perhaps I forgot to let you and that squealing brat out when you asked. McRule looks directly at Betsy's father which is still holding him up, however, I am quite busy so do you mind letting me get back to work? Seb replies seriously, no chance. You're going to sit down and tell us what's going on. McRule calmly replies, very well, just let me sit down. Betsy's father releases him. McRule sits in H278 chair, here. And all the falling debris given me a bad back and these H278 seats are so comfortable. McRule looks at everyone and speaks out, where to begin? Well, me, Urcher, and the rest of H278 team are scientific researchers, working on a new transportation device for which we need human test subjects. Unfortunately, there are still few, uh, kinks in the system we need to iron out. Betsy's father snaps out, what did you do to my daughter and me? McRule replies calmly, calm down, I'll tell you everything. But first wouldn't you like to open the exit? McRule points to a door, it's right here, then we can talk outside in safety. McRule looks at Tammy, Tammy, be a deer and push that red button there, would you? It'll open the door. 
As Tammy goes to push the button Seb notices something, wait, that's it, it looks familiar, the H278 prototype. Seb suddenly screams, Tammy, no. Bo and the whole building shakes. And out of the nowhere McRule vanishes. And suddenly Betsy's father, huh. He's disappeared. And sure enough the seat there remained alone, a formal luxury seat in a big blue capsule with Anderson Okamai crest on it, and the user interface panel. D.O.M., cough cough well, I wasn't expecting that. Tammy embarrassed, I'm sorry. I thought the button would open the exit. D.O.M., it's not your fault, my girl. No one could have guessed that the chair would vaporize that obnoxious fellow. As they move on towards the exit the robot speaks out, final document decrypted. Seb again takes a look. 2. Meme Bears of H278 Project. From. Dr. Urcher, Senior Searcher. Subject. Continuation of H278. You are all aware by now of the tragic disappearance of Homo sapien test subject hashtag 01. After extensive research we have concluded that the safety measurements protecting hashtag 01 from exposure actually interfered with H278 receiver. In short, although the transmitter was able to break down the data, there was nowhere for it to go. Until we have solved this situation no further human testing of H278 will occur. Thank you for understanding and ongoing discretion. You are all aware by now of the tragic disappearance of Homo sapien test subject hashtag 01. After extensive research we have concluded that the safety measurements protecting hashtag 01 from exposure actually interfered with H278 receiver. In short, although the transmitter was able to break down the data, there was nowhere for it to go. Until we have solved this situation no further human testing of H278 will occur. Thank you for understanding and ongoing discretion. Best. Dr. Urcher. Betsy's father, what liars. They tested H-278 on us today, and based on the rumble they haven't resolved the situation. Seb thinks deeply, good point although, you and Betsy were tested on down here, yet we found you both on higher level of the building. Seb holding his chin, also, McRule must have known what the chair would do, or else he wouldn't have tricked Tammy into activating it. Seb looks towards the team, Lydia said that H-278 was the name of the new transportation system they were working on, Yet all we've seen are these chairs, could they be the transmitter? Seb suddenly get an idea, wait, I've got it. The H-278 chairs, they don't vaporize people, they move them. Tammy, what do you mean? Like teleportation? Seb, that's exactly what I mean, think about it, McRule wouldn't voluntarily do anything which would hurt himself. He must know where the H-278 receiver is. The test subject who disappeared, he didn't reappear in the receiver, so they stopped human testing until Betsy and her dad, who were then teleported to different parts of the building. Seb amazed, it's amazing, really. Imagine being able to sit in a chair and reappear in a flash somewhere else. This technology will change everything. Betsy's father comments, except it's broken. Every time someone activates H278 it causes a rumble, and Urcher said himself in one of the files that there are side effects. Tammy, he's right. Seb, we need to concentrate on getting out of here. The last couple of shakes has only made the building worse. D.O.M., the exit must be down here somewhere. As they descend floor after another Seb simply can't stop talking or thinking about the teleportation technology he just discovered, I can't believe Anderson Okamai have managed to perfect teleportation. It's incredible. It explains so much. The shake must have been caused by some malfunction in the teleportation and Betsy and her dad were teleported to different parts of the building, it causes memory loss, which is why Betsy didn't recognize McRule straight away. Seb looks at the ceiling, that weird giant chair we found was an old teleportation device prototype. And Sir Arthur was one of one last primates to try out H-278. He was probably dressed to see whether clothes would affect the device. Seb continues the path with his friends even while removing rubble he can't stop talking, although I still don't understand what happened to the first human tester homo sapien test subject hashtag 01 or why Urcher is looking for me. In fact do you remember the design that Betsy found? It listed memory loss as one of the side effects of H278. Seb looks at Tammy, I'm beginning to think, or hope, that I might have been teleported to. Tammy confused, but, Seb, why would you want that? Seb enthusiastic, 
imagine being a part of such a groundbreaking discovery. Tammy doesn't like the whole thing, I am part of it. I accidentally pressed on the button to activate McCruel's H278 device and caused another rumble. I've endangered anyone left in here. I feel so guilty about it. Seb, you don't want that. As they reach the five underground floor they continue walking through it until they recognize something. Tammy, this must be McCruel's desk. Tammy takes a look around, there are all these H278 files. Seb takes a look as well, do they explain how it all works? This technology will change the world, when we get out. D.O.M. look towards Seb, if we get out, my boy. D.O.M. takes a look at the floor, we must find the exit before another tremor blocks it. As they move on the floors looks almost endless. Tammy, how many lower levels are there? Bot, where's the secret exit? The robot replies, clearance denied. Information only accessible by Dr. Urcher. Tammy, yeah, yeah, I know. Tammy looks towards Seb, Seb, are you okay? You're a bit quiet. Seb looks towards her, I'm fine. I'm just trying to figure out how H-278 works. I can only assume it's through electromagnetic waves. They break down the body's data and then send it to the receiver, which reforms it in a separated location. Mind-boggling. Tammy worried, I don't like it, Seb if your body breaks down and is put together somewhere else, what happens to your personality? Your soul? It gives me the shivers just thinking about it. As they move on Tammy wonders if Sir Arthur is alright, and if it's well fed, suddenly she checks her dress's pocket. Tammy, oh, Seb. Seb, what is it? Are you okay? Tammy, well, I'm fine. But you know how I keep losing my china cat? She says that as she places her both pointer fingers against each other's embarrassed. Seb, have you lost it again? Tammy with her both arms behind her back, yeah. As they search they find the cat not very far away it was on a piece of rubble, looks like the rubble somehow reached into Tammy's pocket somehow. Seb, great, the cat is safe again. Let's keep going. Betsy speaks out, excuse me, mister. My teddy. Seb looks towards her again. Sign. Betsy with an embarrassed face, yeah. As they search a little bit, they find out it was left nearby some nearby rubble, looks like Betsy forgot it when she was helping out clearing the rubble. Seb, so, now both Cat and the Teddy are secure. Are we ready to get going? Before he even steps one step D.O.M., hold on, Seb. We can't go wading through that water over there. Seb looks at the floor, oh, mop time. D.O.M. holding his mop, yeah, it's mop time. And he begins clearing the floor from all the water. At the moment D.O.M. is done Seb speaks out, right, water cleared and no prized possessions missing. It looks like we're ready to go. The robot suddenly speaks out, sir, if you don't mind. Seb looks at it, groan. The robot. I'd like to run a quick diagnostic test on my logic circuits. Seb, is this really the best time for that? The robot, affirmative. After waiting for the robot to finish its check. Seb reluctantly asks, okay, who's next? No responses. Seb, no one? Everyone shakes their heads. Seb, wow. Let's go. Because of the wasted time, they had to rush through four floors one after another. Until they reached a new floor. As she is walking Tammy, ouch. I just trod on something sharp. A broken picture frame. Seb takes a look, it's McRule. Trust him to have a selfie. Tammy looks towards one of the windows nearby, wait, I think I just saw someone's shadow through that window. Betsy sees him, daddy. There's that creepy man. Tammy, gasp it's Urcher. And indeed there was Urcher in his hazardous material suit. Tammy, we're trapped. The hazmat suit is approaching through the window. Seb, you all go that way. I'll try to lead him in the other direction. Everyone are rushing away, except for Tammy, no, Seb, you can't. Seb, go. And the chase begins, the team from a direction and Seb with Hosmet behind him from the other direction. Seb, this guy doesn't give up. But why is he so desperate to find me? And again Seb begins running away from Hosmet removing any quick to remove rubble from his way, until he reaches a floor. Seb, 
there's an office over there. I'll barricade myself in it until the others have had time to get away. As he grabs and places any kind of stuff he finds into the door he suddenly recognizes something. Seb, whoa, this office, it looks familiar. Seb looks at the desk, what's this? A picture frame that looks just like the one Tammy stepped over. Seb looks at it, a copy of the picture Tammy stepped on, but that's... Seb shocked, that's me with McGruel. No, that can't mean. The Hosmet suddenly appears out of the nowhere, Urcher. Seb, how did you get I here? Take whatever you want, just don't hurt the others. Hosmet, I don't want to hurt the others, I want to hurt you. Seb backing away, why? What have I done? Hosmet, everything. All of this. It's all because of you, Dr. Urcher. Seb shocked to the bone, no. I can't be Urcher. I can't. I'm just an intern leave me alone. I've got to get away from you. As Seb tries his hardest to stay away from Hosmet guy removing anything in his way, as Hosmet is approaching him slowly he speaks out all his heart to Seb. Hosmet I'll always be chasing you, Urcher. You know who you are. You and that other one tested on me. You said I wouldn't feel a thing. You lied. I woke in the desert. Hungry, thirsty, alone. With only this ankle tag to show for it? Homo sapien test subject hashtag 01 I guess that's all I am to you. Seb still backing away, the desert. I don't understand. Wait, something is coming back to me. Seb holding his both hands between him and Hosmet guy, the memo about the test subject disappearance, did I write it? Seb looks at him, no, this has nothing to do with me. Hosmet speaks out, Lair. You told me the suit would protect me, but there was a chance it would interfere with the receiver. You knew that could happen. Out in the desert there was a chimpanzee in a vest, another test subject of yours. So this isn't the first time something had ended up here. For three days I've wandered around, trying to catch the blasted animal for food. Until today when I suddenly found myself back in the building. Seb, today. Perhaps that was the same time as the shake, when H-278 was reactivated, your suit itself could have acted as a transmitter and teleported you back here, but, I don't understand how I know that. Seb holds his head, I don't want to remember, please make it stop. Seb shouts in Hosmet's face, I am not Urcher. Hosmet, I'm going to make you pay. Seb, please, I never meant to hurt you, I only wanted to help mankind. At last Seb stops backing up and Hosmet guy removes his helmet to reveal from beneath it an old man with white hair and white big mustache with glasses, you can't run away from me, Urcher. Seb sits down on his knees, everything is starting to make sense, I wish I didn't I wish there was another explanation, but I remember now, the chair. I created that. This technology, it was going to be the pinnacle of my career. I. I was going to be a hero. I'm so sorry for what we did to you. For had I did. If the rumble was to do with H-278, then I've endangered everything. This is all my fault. Seb looks at Hosmet, but, please, let me put it right. If I could just help my friends find the exit. Seb stands up, let me do that at least. Then you can report me, or even kill me if you need to. Hosmet, agreed. You show them out, but don't think you can get away from me Urcher. As they both went to the direct the team went to, Tammy notices them. Tammy, Seb. You made it. And the moment she sees the unmasked Hosmet, what's he doing with you? Seb, I can't explain right now, but he's not going to hurt you. He's not Urcher. Seb turns towards the robot, but, where's the secret exit? The robot, the exit is located on floor minus 13, two levels below us. Tammy shocked. I thought Bot could only give Urcher that information. Tammy backs away, Seb, what's going on? D.O.M., I believe I can tell you, my girl. I should have realized earlier. D.O.M. backs away slowly, that robot has never denied our friend Seb here any information. D.O.M. looks directly towards Seb eye to eye, he is Dr. Urcher. Tammy back away even more towards her friends, no, that's not true. That's impossible. Tammy speaks out loud, Urcher is evil. He, he tested on Betsy. Seb, I'm so sorry. Tammy. Tammy looking towards him with her tears breaking down, 
How could you? I trusted you. I... I liked you sobs. Seb, please, let me explain. I've only just remembered who I am. I don't know how I could have done those things, but meeting you, meeting all of you has. Tammy shouts with all her voice, leave me alone. I never want to see you again. Betsy's father is almost losing his nerve himself, seconded. You better go before I do something I regret. After Hosmet Guy joins them the whole team began moving on their own leaving Seb whom lowered his head to the floor unable to know what to say or to do. Suddenly a new shake hits forcing Tammy to scream, ah. Seb sees the ceiling breaking apart, watch out. A moment and the dust fall down on everyone. Seb is coughing harshly, Tammy. Where are you? The voice comes from beneath the rubble. Tammy, Seb. We're trapped. The ceiling collapsed on us. Seb, stay there. I'll get help. As Seb began wandering around in a hurry suddenly he meets up with McGrool. McGrool, ah, Seb. I see you've decided to ditch those hangers on, nice call. Seb, how did you get here? McGrool smiling, I think you know the answer to that, Dr. Urcher. Now it's only you and me, I have to ask, did you really lose your memory, or were you faking it so you could get close to Tammy? Seb, of course I lost my memory, you piece of dirt. McGrule, makes sense, I suppose. You were teleported at the same time as the rest of them. I guess even the inventor isn't immune to the side effects of his creation. Seb asked, what are you talking about? McGrule, you still don't remember the rumble? You were down here trying out the H-278 pod for yourself. After that civilian went missing, you said you wouldn't ask another human to test something you weren't prepared to test yourself. McGrule speaks in rage, of course, I couldn't allow time to be wasted while you rested with ethics. I arranged for the family to test it out on the level above. Clearly that turned out to be a mistake. McGrule continues as he moves back and forth, I believe simultaneously activating dual transmitters in such close proximity caused a catastrophic collision of electromagnetic waves. That resulted in structural damage to the building as well as redirecting the data, you, the child and her father. Seb. I don't understand, why didn't you just tell me that earlier, when we were at top of the building? McRule, I couldn't risk the confidentiality of H-278, and that imbecile of a secretary never left your side. Seb speaks in rage. So you caused this, you couldn't wait me to check the technology was safe. You went behind my back. McRule replies in rage, what of it? When I deleted those files during stage 2 to hide the fact that the apes kept going missing, you were more than happy to believe it was due to a power surge. You didn't even ask me how it might have happened. So don't pretend you didn't know what I was doing. You were the one obsessed with proving this technology before our competitors did. You wanted the people to remember your name as the power of teleportation. McRule calms down a bit, ironic, really. Considering that now you can barely remember your own name. Anyway, Seb. Listen to me, now you have an opportunity to make it all worthwhile. McRule pulls out a memory card, I've been downloading our research onto this memory card and I've wiped all records linking us to the human testing. The exit is right here, leave with me and we can finish this research and sell the technology for more wealth that we've ever imagined. McRule smiling, we'll be rich and civilization will never be the same again. Your name will live forever, Dr. Urcher. Seb. And what about my friends? McRule, leave them. They'll never accept what you've done. If you stay here and help them, all your work will have been for nothing. Assuming you even survive. McRule raises his hand to shake, what do you say? old friend. Seb looks at McCrule's hand, and looks directly in his eyes only to see the love of greed and wealth, and no caring for friends family or even co-workers. In the other hand, he remembered the hard-working friends of his and how they all worked so hard with him, Tammy being his closest friend that keeps losing her china cat, Betsy, and her teddy, her father and the robot, Keenan, and his stupid zombie obsession, Hosmet and his determination towards the vengeance. Seb knew that if he returns back to them there's a high chance that they'll take vengeance and make him pay, but at the same time, if he goes with McRule he never knows if he'll do anything weird behind his back again or even backstab him one day, after all a traitor once is always a traitor. Suddenly Seb remembered the name McRule keeps calling him with Dr. Urcher a name that chills Seb's bones each time it's mentioned, and a name that he hated so very much all this time, 
only to end up being called by that all his life. McRule suddenly breaks the silence, Dr. Urcher that I know would say, you're right, every scientist must make sacrifices and name of innovation. I'm in, but I want 70% of the profits. McRule adds, my hand is getting tired old friend, are you in with me or are you in? Seb, every scientist has to make sacrifices indeed. Seb ending. Seb looks at McRule, no chance. I'm not leaving my friends, I need to rescue Tammy. McRule in rage, suit yourself, fool. I might give you a mention in my Nobel Prize acceptance speech, goodbye, Seb. Seb, good riddance. McRule goes outside the way clearing what's left of rubble before his face towards the exit as Seb goes back to the rubble. Seb, Tammy. Tammy, are you alright? Tammy's voice, help us. Seb, I'm going to have to clear the rubble by myself. Hold tight and keep breathing. And he begins clearing loads upon loads of rubble. With each piece he removed more of his memories with his friends emerge, the first time he met Tammy, the first time he met the robot, and funny searches for the china cat and the teddy bear, the chases with Hosmet and the meeting with Keenan and with Betsy's father, with each memory he's gaining more strength and more strength until the very moment of his memory remembering Tammy's face of shock when the ceiling collapsed over all of them only because McRule used H-278 to reach the exit quickly. Casing the worst ruble of all. With all this adrenaline rush he removed rubble and bricks metal plates and crashed through the glasses and the stones, not caring about the tiredness or aches he knew this will be the most important moment in his life to save all these souls, and he didn't care he sacrificed all that fame anymore. His friends' lives come first all the time. At last Tammy comes out from a hole he cleared, cough cough you did it. You saved us. The robot next, I thank you, sir, although I cannot feel pain. I did not wish to be deactivated. Next up was D.O.M., my boy, I will remember your name for a long time to come. Next comes outside the hole is Betsy, thank you, mister. Her father is pulled out next, I expected you to leave us all to rot under that, Urcher, I haven't forgiven you, but I'm thankful you saved my little girl. Come on Betsy. As they hug Seb continued his work getting Hosmet guy outside the rubble as the last survival, where's the other scientist gone? I heard his voice. Seb stands up trying to catch a breath, he left, taking all the research. Hosmet guy, I'll chase him down. He was the worst out of the two of you, but don't think this means I've forgotten about you. Urcher. Seb looks towards Tammy, Tammy, you said earlier you liked me. I don't expect that's still true, but just so you know, I'm glad this all happened, because I, well, I like you too. Seb blushing madly, you're the bravest, funniest person I've ever met. Tammy replies, only because you can't remember anyone else. Seb giggles a bit, see. You can even make me laugh now, after everything I've done. Tammy smiles, I don't know what you've done as Urcher, but I know the things you've done as Seb. You saved us. Tammy smiling and blushing, so after we get out of here maybe, just maybe, you could ask me out on a date. I'm not promising I'll say yes, though. Seb smiling, in that case, can I borrow your lucky cat? Tammy looks directly at him and the team, for goodness sake let's just get out of here, shall we? And the moment they went out came the shock. Hosmet guy. No, it can't be. Not the desert again. Tammy with widely opened eyes, what? Why are we here? Seb, incredible. H-278 must have teleported the whole building in the first shake. Just like it did to Sir Arthur and Mr. Chen during testing, all the disturbed sand has been blocking our view from the windows. Betsy, I told you it was too hot in there. D.O.M., well, I wasn't expecting that. Tammy asks, what are we going to do now? Seb, we can't go back to the building, because it may collapse at any moment and we can't stay here either. Mr. Chen, Urcher I'm not staying in the desert any longer. Figure out a solution right now. D.O.M., I am not planning on staying here at either. Betsy, I want Sunny and Sands but I don't want to be here. Betsy's father, we must move away from this place, I'm not staying here. Seb thinks for a moment, if H-278 transmitter waves clashing when activating two chairs at the same time, is what brought us here, and the hazmat suit Mr. Chen is wearing worked as an interrupter previously alongside with Sir Arthur's vest, to bring us here, maybe, just maybe we can use the same tactic to escape from here. 
Tammy, what do you mean, Seb? Seb, we'll collect every remaining battery cell in the building and gather all their strengths into one final teleportation, and with a miracle, we should be able to return back to the city, the same way we came here. Mr. Chen, you mean you're going to count on having the possibility that activating two or more chairs at once, using the vest and the hazmat suit again would return us back with the building to the city? Are you crazy? D.O.M., at least we won't lose anything trying. Betsy, if we can go out of here I'll help too, it's too hot in here. Betsy's father, but isn't it dangerous to go back into the building? D.O.M., I think I know a way, if we can use the manual hoist to enter the building, we should be able to reach a high enough level where we can move on searching for battery cells. Seb, let's do our best it's our only chance right now. Seb looks at the robot, bot, search for every still active battery cell in the building we'll need all of them for this last major teleportation. The robot, affirmative, there are a number of battery cells located in different floors, there are only a few battery cells that are stable enough for usage. Seb, let's go get them, and if any rubble falls make sure to clear it with caution. And the team returns with full caution towards the building's hoist one after another they use it, and into the building they return. Once all of them are in the hoist room, they notice that the room's gate fell off with McCruel's last teleportation, and the whole building now is very unstable. Seb, collect as many battery cells as you can, and we'll all meet in H278 room, and we'll try to activate as many chairs together as possible. And the search begins. Removing more and more rubble from their paths, everyone begins gathering as many battery cells as possible. As they were working Betsy speaks to her father, Daddy, if we go in a vacation, I want to go to the mountains where it's cold, and cloudy, I don't want it sunny and hot, with any more sands. Betsy's father, sure, we'll go to the mountains, that I promise. As they were clearing the bricks, D.O.M. asks Tammy, are you sure you're going to date Seb? Tammy, I know what you mean, but Seb is Seb, and he's no longer Urcher. D.O.M., he can live as Seb, but he can never neglect the fact he's still Urcher. Tammy, I know, his last name will chase him forever, but with our help he'll always be Seb that we know. Seb waiting in the chair room, began setting up the chair to make this one last teleportation, although he can barely remember how to do so, he did whatever he remembered. When suddenly a very familiar voice comes out, so you intend on using H-278 again. Seb without even looking, leave me alone McRule, I'm busy. McRule, I was very shocked when I saw the outside was nothing but dessert, so what are you planning to do? I mean the whole building is very unstable now. Seb raises his head, thanks to your both needless teleports. McRule, I had no choice, you saw how that man approached me and was about to punch me in the face? Seb, maybe because you deserved it. McRule, anyway, so old friend what are you up to? Seb, none of your business. McRule laughed so hard, none of my business. Urcher I have the whole project on this memory card, and you're telling me it's none of my business? Seb, leave me to work. McRule, let me guess, you'll use H-278 to return back to the city somehow. That's the stupidest thing I had yet to think about. What if you ended up in a worse place than this? Seb still not looking at him, if you're here to help then help, if you're here only to chat then leave me alone. McRule, and how do I help out? Seb, go get some battery cells, they have to be stable and active. McRule, fine. I'll help out but only because I want to get out of here and I'm still going to continue working on this project alone. Seb, do whatever pleases you. Before he moves McRule comments, or maybe you should go and get the batteries while I program H-278 on doing this big jump. Seb, not a chance. Seb looks at the robot right beside him, bot, I need you to program H-278 to do the next teleport. The robot, affirmative. Seb walking towards McRule, you and I both will go gather as many battery cells as possible. McRule, okay. As they began removing more rubble, searching for the cells, McRule speaks, you do know that my offer is still open to you right? Seb, keep searching. McRule, you know we can both use H-278 together and teleport back to the city, leaving all the others behind and we can both gain wealth. Before he even finished his words Seb interrupts, no thanks, you can take all the project for yourself, I don't want any of it. I'm not doing something that will harm others. 
McRule didn't really like this reply, you really thought that they accepted you? Don't be fooled by them. They're only being friendly so they can teleport back, and once they're there they'll turn you in. Seb looked at him, I don't mind, I did too many mistakes in my past and I want to correct them, even if it costs me my life. McRule, you're still the same fool I knew, you think I'll tell you how to activate H278? You can barely remember your name, or where you worked. Seb, I don't need your help if it's built on hurting the others. McRule replies in rage, you're the one whom said scientists need to make sacrifices for the sake of science and now you're telling me you don't want to hurt others. Who are you trying to fool here? Give a break to your ethics dilemma. You can't have breakthroughs and believe nobody will abuse your creation at the same time. Seb, I'm not fooling anyone at all, I'm just trying to correct my wrongs and to help everyone to return back to the city and to their homes. McRule, then what will you do? If you're dropping the project what will you do for living in Anderson Okamai? Seb, once we go back to the city I'll seek another job in another department. No more human testing, and if the company demanded I take responsibility with you for the teleportation technology, I shall help, but I don't want my name on it. McRule, you're a dreaming fool, more than I expected. Do you really believe that Anderson Okamai will let you leave even with your memory lost? Did you even forget about the contracts we signed? And the years of development we went through? All this will be ruined only because you were charmed by that imbecile of a secretary. Seb removing more bricks, don't badmouth Tammy. At least she's helping out gathering what we need unlike what you're doing yourself. McRule, whatever just know this you can go out and do whatever you want, but know this very well, the Project H-278 is mine from now on and mine alone. Seb, suit yourself. After some searching both Seb and McRule find some cells, they return back to the Project H-278 chamber, and they regroup with everyone there. Upon seeing McRule. Tammy, what's he doing here? D.O.M., why is he here? Betsy's father, you came back. Mr. Chen, just wait till I get my hands on you. Seb stopped everyone at once, now is not the time to take vengeance. Everyone we must focus on using H-278 once more time, which will be the last. D.O.M., we got as many batteries as we found. Betsy, and we happen to meet a weird guy, he keeps talking about zombies. Seb, Keenan is still here? Mr. Chen, Urcher, we have to move on. This building will only handle one more shake and that's it. Seb, please call me Seb, I'm not Urcher any longer. Seb looks at the robot, but how much energy can we gather from all these battery cells, and is it enough to overclock H-278 to the maximum? The robot, the battery cell's energy is very high and is getting unstable, the project will be overclocked only once, and after it overclocks it'll collapse for good. Seb, very well, now to do this, I'll go into the chair, and turn on the project H-278, while McRule turns on another chair, and Bot turns on another one, we'll activate as many chairs as possible, and hope that with the hazmat interruption, and Sir Arthur's vest, the transmitting waves will fuse together, and teleport the building back to the city one last time. Tammy, Seb, do you know where Lydia is? Seb, I believe she's still in the building seeking the exit, since if she found the exist and saw the desert, she must have came back here somewhere. Seb, bot initiate teleportation sequence. Robot, affirmative. The whole building began shaking, from the ground to the highest point in it. Seb, come on. Flash. Back at the city everyone is wondering where did that big skyscraper vanish to? It has been hours since we last saw it. Suddenly the whole ground shakes very aggressively, and out of the nowhere, appears the tower flying in the air. Only to land on the ground breaking every last remaining standing wall in it. People began calling the ambulance and the police and everything else. From the rubble and the breaking down skyscraper, weird shadows emerged, people began taking photographs and pictures, the media reached the location, and the news is on. Right now live from the location of the weird incident of Anderson Okamai Company's office building disappearance incident, after many hours of the weird vanishing of the skyscraper it reappeared out of the nowhere, crashed into the ground, with a group of people leaving it on their feet. Right now the ambulance is giving the survivors first aid, and taking care of them. On another channel. Live on the location of the incident of the disappearance of Anderson Okamai Company main office building, the great skyscraper returned with a big earthquake, 
and from it a group of people being identified as we speak, the police is checking about them as survivors of the mysterious incident. On yet another channel. We're here live with you form the very location of the incident of Anderson Okamai the giant of transportation technology and its main office building mysterious disappearance, after the first earthquake a second one struck the city, bringing back the skyscraper with it flying in the sky as it landed into the ground breaking every last standing column inside the skyscraper, with a number of survivors coming outside of it. According to information we just gained, the survivors are the scientist Dr. Urcher, Dr. McRool, Tammy, D.O.M. the janitor, a young girl named Betsy, and her father is with her, and the others are yet to be identified. And so on the media channels began a marathon that didn't stop at all. And the main office of Anderson Okamai opened a case to research and discover what exactly went on to end up with a whole skyscraper vanishing and returning at the same day. The gang was taken to nearest possible hospitals where they took medications for muscle fatigue and exhaustion. After few months, everyone were back at their homes happy and glad they managed to return back. McRule went to the company and continued working on the H-278 project alone, only to be sued by Mr. Chen for the safety is not included with that project, and what better persecutor could Mr. Chen chose for such a job other than Lydia? Sir Arthur returned back to the zoo, while D.O.M. went back to Anderson Okamai to tell the story about the brave man Seb whom chose his friends over the fame and the wealth. Later on, Lydia and Mr. Chen together won the case, and McRule was forced to give back fees for all the damage that was done to the skyscraper. Later on McRule lost his position and the project was given back to Urcher as the head researcher. Betsy and her father both went to the mountains on their vacation, Seb got himself a lucky china cat, and went into his honeymoon with Tammy. D.O.M. gained the trophy for being the most loyal and the longest serving employee that served in very unusual conditions, and now new janitors are working under him. McRule forced to pay back the company for his disobedience to Urcher, and was forced to work under him until the research is done. Mr. Chen was reunited with his wife, and nowadays he's not going to test anything for the science any longer. Mr. Chen was reunited with his wife, and nowadays he's not going to test anything for the science any longer. Betsy and her father learned not to believe in any commercial they come across, and Project H-278 was given to Sebastian Urcher, who with the help of McRool, managed to reach new levels of success, without using any human or living test subjects anymore. Lydia wishing to still try her chances with Sebastian decided to work as his personal lawyer, and work in their department, being now the lawyer of Dr. Urcher, Dr. McRule, and Lady Tammy Urcher, Sebastian's wife. With Sebastian's leadership, H-278 reached levels unseen before, and with McRule's enforced punishment, both of them reached development for commercial teleportation devices, and military services, Sebastian Urcher takes his early retirement, and lives his life with Tammy, while McRule continues his punishment with Anderson Okamai to pay back for his crimes. Both researchers are given Nobel Prizes, and are honored with their names across the history, the project was such a great success, their competitors were bought by Anderson Okamai, and with that step, Dr. Sebastian Urcher, and his assistant Dr. Blythe McRule both became the pioneers of worldwide teleportation. The End Urcher Ending McRule suddenly breaks the silence, Dr. Urcher that I know would say, you're right, every scientist must make sacrifices and name of innovation. I'm in, but I want 70% of the profits. McRule adds, my hand is getting tired old friend, are you in with me or are you in? Seb, every scientist has to make sacrifices indeed. Seb looks at McRule, consider that I said it. McRule, I knew it. That's the Sebastian Urcher I know. But now we need to hurry, the ceiling is beginning to cave in. Seb, let's clear the exit. Hold your breath. As they both moved outside the building, the gang were stuck beneath the falling roof, they were waiting for some help that would save their lives. Tammy, Seb. Seb. Where are you? Help us. Mr. Chen, he's not coming back. Tammy can't believe it, he has to. He will come back. Seb wouldn't just leave us. D.O.M. understands the cruel reality had to tell Tammy the truth, I believe it's time to call him Dr. Urcher, my girl. As the guys were left beneath the falling roof to die and rotten both Dr. Urcher and Dr. McRule made it outside. McRule, we made it. And with this memory stick in my pocket, we'll be the most famous scientists in history. Urcher, now we just need to invent a machine which clears rubble. McRule being sarcastic as always, first, can we please find the cafe? 
I'm starving. Urcher looks at him, sounds good. That's if we can find one in all this dust and fog. The moment they went outside the gate they couldn't believe their very eyes. McRule, what the? Urcher, whoa, we're in the desert. H-278 must have teleported the whole building in the first shake. Just like it did to Sir Arthur and Mr. Chen during testing. Urcher being very proud of himself, that's why the building has been so hot, and why it's falling down. And all that dust and fog came from disturbing the sands. Urcher looks at his friend, McRule, do you know what this man's? The technology is stronger than we ever imagined, it's incredible. This will affect everything, how we fight wars, how we build cities, how we live everyday life. McRule wasn't that much excited, yeah, you seem to be forgetting one thing. And he shouts with his strongest, how the heck are we getting out of here? Urcher thought for a while, what if we gather all the battery cells we have, reactivate them and use them for one more grand teleportation? Won't that help us return back to the city? McRule, I'm not sure but it's better to try than to stay here. So they both return back into the building, and the gang's voices vanished, both of the scientists gather as many battery cells as they can, bring them all into the H-278 chair. McRule, let me handle the rest from here my friend. McRule begins programming the chair on one big and very strong teleportation, that will include every single still active chair, to fuse and force big teleportation of the entire building back to the city. Urcher, let's do this. The moment they turn on the chair a very strong shake happens again. And out of the nowhere back in the city, the building that suddenly vanished reasonless, suddenly reappears, and the moment it comes back, the roof as a whole collapses, taking any remaining life inside it alongside with the rubble. Urcher and McRule emerge from the rubble, the moment they return back into the city, they skip away from the crowds that are gathering, opening their path towards the nearest restaurant. As they sat there and the civil defense and ambulance teams arrived, Urcher and McRule were taken for questioning, and the bodies of Tammy, D.O.M., and the rest of the team later on were found under the rubble. They had no chance of surviving that collapse. Later on and in some months on forward, the media officially announced that Anderson Okamai developed the strongest device to ever yet be seen, H-278 was sold for millions upon millions of investor. Both McRule and Urcher won many prizes one after another for their work and invention, their names were craved on the silver and the gold, and inside very living human's mind. They were titled Teleportation Fathers. Later on the military bought the device and the fights were never again the same. Ever. McRule and Urcher both were abnormally wealthy, and they lived the life they wanted, until the day when Lydia and Sir Arthur showed up asking about the others. Urcher and McRule told her that they didn't have a chance of survival. Regardless the bad news, Lydia was glad that they both managed to escape, she informed them that upon their teleportation, she as well happened to return to the building that very moment. Feeling bad for Urcher, Lydia began dating him after he lost Tammy. After years. The scene shows Urcher standing under the rain before a group of graves in the cemetery. Urcher places some flowers, you have no idea how much I missed you guys, I knew that I had to make sacrifices as a scientist, and you all were my greatest sacrifice I ever done. I perfected H-278 teleport device, and now my name is well known around the whole world. Urcher takes off his hat for respect, I'll never forget the shake, nor will I ever forget any of you guys either. Thanks for sacrificing for the greater good, your work won't ever be forgotten, as long as I and McRule live on. Urcher brings up a little china cat, see Tammy? I told you I'll get my own lucky china cat, I believe I got all I needed in my life, so I'll be giving this china cat to you, shall you ever forgive what I done, and rest in peace in the other world. As he places the little glass china cat on Tammy's grave, he puts on back his hat, and moves away. The scene backs away from the china cat and the cemetery little by little, until it turns towards the sky. And the scene fades into blackness followed by Tammy's voice, was it really all worth it? Seb. Suddenly a sound of shattering glass appears. The scene only flashing with a bolt of lightning shows the little china cat, on the ground shattered into pieces signing for Urcher that his sin will never be forgiven. Back into perfect blackness. The end.